Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Shredder here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in the epically fantastic Little Nightmares 2. Now, the game was developed by Tarsia Studios, published by Bandai Namco Entertainment and is available for a very reasonable £24.99. Now we play as a small, small, small boy called Mono who, like our previous small hero in the first Little Nightmare 6, has to traverse through different levels, getting past big stuff that want to kill us, even though uh, all we're doing is basically nothing. We're just being nice and friendly, but hey, anyone bigger than you is automatically a jerk, right? Eh, just kidding, of course. Uh, <laughs> but it does improve on basically every aspect from the first game, so you are in for a proper good treat. Now, achievements and trophies-wise, there's basically there's nothing too overly difficult. There's story-related ones for every time you finish a chapter, a few missable ones which can easily be missed, so keep an eye out for them. And we'll be grabbing collectibles in each level, uh, glittering remains and hats, and the big one, this time around, there is no speedrun slash no death achievement. So, if you prefer your games with a lot less pressure, this makes it even more enjoyable for you. Come on. So, depending on skill level, etc., we are looking at around six to eight hours to complete this, as some of the sneaking sections can potentially get annoying. Again, not overly difficult, but they can get slightly annoying. So, with that being said, then, let us begin anyway. And so we begin then, we come out of a TV, onto the level, we have a carrier bag on our head, very much like Ugly Bob from the uh, first few seasons of South Park. So we're going to call ourselves Ugly Bob for a while, but now you can just sort of get used to the controls and everything. So obviously it's left to, uh, left to move, you can pan the camera right and left with the right directional stick. Uh, use the X button to sprint, and <laughs> And if you want to look like you are masturbating, as I just did there, that'll be the right trigger button. So from here, then what you need to do is press the A button to jump, and then to usually hold on to things and hang on to cliff edges, etc., you've got to hold the right trigger in. So like with this bit now, hold the right trigger, pull it out using the left directional stick, and then we can go on through. So press the left trigger to crouch there, and then you can carry on. But if you are new to the game, the controls may take a little bit of getting used to in the terms of sort of having to hold the right trigger button while you're jumping or while you're sprinting, etc. to grab onto things and everything. So this is the shoe. You don't have to do anything with it, but it sort of gets you used to it. So you press the right trigger to pick something up and then press A to throw it. That bag of people there kind of looks like an orgy gone wrong, really, doesn't it? That's an unfortunate way. Pleasure, then death. Hmm. How unfortunate. So, go past this tree. And then, again, this is more of a tutorial level. So, jump down, again, using the A button. I don't think you can take any damage from falling, so that's fine. So, again, you actually have to keep hold of the right trigger as you're pulling yourself up as well. Um, jump over this little trap right here. So, if you want to give yourself a little sprinting start, uh, you can do that. And you'll have to push this one. So again, right trigger and then push it down. And then what you need to do then, again, with the right trigger, push it back. And then you'll be able to jump up on there and then jump on up. So again, it, it, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. Um, but really sort of, you know, especially after the first level, you should be absolutely golden with it. And then I'm literally just talking nonsense if you played the first game. So again, press the left trigger to crouch. We're going to crouch on under. And at this bit, hold down the X button and sprint. Sprint all the way down and do not stop. And there's a reason for that. There's an, the achievement, the first achievement we're going to get called Evasive Prey. Uh, basically, for not dying. So we can't die through this log bear. And there's a couple of bear traps we'll be going through a little bit later on, which we can't die at as well. So once down here then, head up this log. Now we're going to 
Um, swing across with this noose. Obviously, try not to get your ugly bob head caught in there, because that will not end well. So get a little sprint and start, jump up, and then you press E to sort of jump off there. If you want to give yourself a little bit more momentum, of course, you can press left, right, left, right. And uh, this is a familiar mechanic with the from the first game as well, so we'll be grabbing levers. Again, you'll have to be holding the right trigger. So as soon as that's all the way at the bottom there, jump across until we get to the side. And then just sprint on by. Now this is a very important bit. You you're, you think you can just jump straight across, right? Yes, you'll die doing that. So just jump down sort of towards the screen. And before heading up, keep heading to the right. It might be a little bit hard to see, but past that bit. And we can sort of crouch under this little secret entrance, if you want to call it that. I mean, it is a secret entrance. And basically, this is where we are getting our first glitching remain. It's sort of... I mean, how else can I explain it? It's a, it's a black shadowy figure that glitches. Yeah, so we're getting plenty of these throughout the game. So now we can head back up. And then once we are at the top, we can get our ugly bob self going. Now we're going to start um, trying to evade the traps, which is very easily done. So you can jump down here with no problem. Pick up one shoe, any shoe. I don't know why there's a bunch of random shoes, but throw it over to the other side. Then we can jump up. And before heading on any further, you can just see little sticks sticking out of the ground. Throw the shoe sort of into the middle of where the sticks are. Do not do what I just done. It completely balls that one up. Um, there we go. So if we throw it in the middle, that'll be the trap we can evade. And this log will come down for us to jump up. So, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I was quite stupid and I don't know how to throw shoes in a straight line. But there we go. That's what happens when you are over 30 now. So jump down here and then we can just keep going forward for the minute. See these bear traps? Very obvious these ones are, so we can easily avoid them. Uh, there's only sort of two there to avoid anyway. Uh, there's two in the middle there, but they're already shut, so they're fine. Uh, grab this stick, so again, it's the right trigger, and then use the left directional stick to sort of pull it out by pulling it to the left. There we go. And then, again, you'll have to hold the right trigger stick, uh, right trigger to carry it with you. Press the A button to hit this bear trap right by the uh, entrance to the log right here, and then you can go on through. So again, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's fine. So, there's bear traps here, but before heading on, crouch underneath the log that we just came down, and we are going to be getting Glitching Remain number two for this Sexioni. So, once we get out of here, grab this stick. Do not go sprinting off, but this, see this pile of leaves? We're going to be hitting it. So if you can hit the first bit and just sort of ever inchly close, you can see them now when you get rid of the leaves. And then when you hit it, that'll get rid of all the bear traps in this little section. So now we can just jump up and jump up to the other side. Grab this old Granadu Pine Kono. Anyone, anyone will do. They're all the same. And give that a little throw, a little whirl, and then that'll get rid of these bear traps as well. So you can just head on straight. Make sure to just jump up onto the log right here, not the other side, because you could potentially die. I think there's a couple of bear traps around. There is. So make sure to jump up and <laughs> climb on up. There we go. So that is that. So as long as you didn't die at all through, through the log or the bear trap section, run forward. As soon as you get up to this deck in before the house, you will get the evasive prey achievement. And if you did die... You can either try and reload your save, or since it's basically at the very beginning of the game anyway, just wait until later. So it should be good, but there we go. Evasive Preno. See, I'm French. And obviously, again, make sure when you jump, press the right trigger. That will get you holding and climbing onto things. Jump on in, and we're going to be getting another achievement actually straight away. So before we head on through the door to the right, go to the back of the screen, right top corner to the fridge, jump up on it. And that is going to get us the second achievement, 
in the first 10 minutes. The what's in the box? What's in the box? And hopefully we all get that Easter egg. So head down towards the screen and then go to the left now and then through this open door. And then we're going to be picking up this collectible hat. So there are only two hats in each level that we're going to grab. Press and hold the right trigger and that will automatically be placed in your pocket. I don't know where you are because you are a small person. And if you want to wear the hat, hey, more than welcome to do that. You don't have to. But for the purpose of this playthrough, yeah, we're going to wear all the hats because we are super cute. So now you can head up and then you can head through the slightly ajar door. So once we get to the bottom of the stairs, head into the right hand door here. And what you need to do is jump up, hold the right trigger, and that will automatically sort of grab the axe down. Now we're going to be, need to be chopping off some genitals right here. No, actually we're not chopping genitals, but if we drag the axe all the way to the left side of the room, ignore the ball, don't put an axe to a ball, I bet that hurts. Press the A button to use it on this already sort of half broken door. You can see the little... Person sort of cowering away, head in, and a little cutscene's going to play. And then we're going to have to do some running after him. Her. It's confirmed to be a her. So we do get shoved out of the way, now we don't have to chase her completely, we're just going to head back up the stairs right here, and it'll definitely be confirmed to be a her, because part of the story will confirm that later on. So, head back through the door, obviously we're going to be following her again, so head to the right over this time, and, <laughs> wow, what a game of cards, one way your eye pops out and one way your face ends up looking like a butthole. That's not very good, but we're going to head up past the family and in through this little event here. And, oh, she's going to need some help. So basically, this is a tutorial. This is this is kind of like a co-op without playing with another person kind of game. Where uh, this person <laughs> is going to help us and we're going to need to help them. So press the right trigger when you're next to her and then what she's going to do is obviously help us out by chucking us up. I, I mean, are we supposed to be like kids? Or are we supposed to be like midget kids or something? I don't know, because we are extremely short. Even shorter than most normal short people. Anyway, head up the ladder. Again, when you climb in and go down, you have to keep hold of the right trigger. Of course, just in case you haven't figured that out already. And then you're going to need to push. So again, it's the right trigger and push to the left, but you'll have to wait for our compadre right here. So push, push, push to my loo, push to my loo, my darlings. And when it's all the way at the end, now we can climb up and climb on over. Climb on over, baby. So once we are here, there's a few things to do. It's a little puzzle section, this one. But once again, our little compadre is going to give us a little boost up. So press the right trigger when you're next to her. And we can now head down. Crouch under here, left trigger under here. Of course, you should know all the buttons by now. And then once again, it's the right trigger to grab something and then press down to pull it. Again, you will get used to it, so I won't be saying it all the time. Yeah! My god! Her freaking arm came off! Well, luckily she's just a puppet because you would have been split with all blood and stuff. You probably would have drowned because we're so short. Anyway, pick up the lever and then head back on through. We can actually get up now with the plank of wood. And there's only one place to stick a lever. Straight up inside your hole. No, that hole. Oh, in fact, our little compadre's just, just done it there. So, once that's in then, compadre will actually turn that for us. We need to jump up on this bag on the right. And then you just need to jump backwards and the key will automatically come off. Uh, you should have enough of a jump even if the bag sort of is halfway in the air. You should be able to jump up and reach it anyway. Just in case uh, you... May not get there in time, but now once we've got the key, again, just pull out this little drawer right here uh, for us to be able to climb on. 
and then climb up a dee up a dee up and then down a dee down a dee down and then just head back down the ladder that will enable us now to get into the next room I mean, we are incredibly short, but as we head outside, head to the back, and you can see this sort of shed or this outhouse. I don't know how people used to poop on that, by the way. I get cold in the inside toilet. But uh, a compadre will help us uh, press right trigger next to her, and then that's going to open the door. That's going to be glitching remain number two out of four for this level. So make sure to be grabbing this glitching remain before you carry on to the right. And now, we're actually going to be coming up very soon to our sort of main boss of the area, if you will. So push this box all the way to the right so we're able to climb up. But that's what it's basically like. In every level, you sort of get a little bit of a platform in section first. And then the sort of stealth sneaking past big old butthole people. So this is going to be the area then. We He can't actually see us now, but sneak anyway. So this is... We'll ca call him Farmer John because he just looks like a very pissed off farmer for some reason. Sneak past, sneak past, but then there's going to be a little chase section after we get outside. He's going to chase us and try and shoot us and blast our ass. So press the right trigger and then obviously just push it to the uh, right and he's going to see us now. So what you need to do here, there are a couple of boxes that we need to hide behind. So quickly run, of course pr uh, holding the X button and hide behind this box. Wait until he shoots the box, then run to the next one. Again, hide behind it, obviously. Wait until he shoots it again. As soon as he does, run off again. Hide behind the third box. And then sprint for your goddamn life. You should now be able to come out under this like little verge. And then just make sure to go into the shadows. He's going to sort of take a little walk past. He's got a bag on his head for some reason. So this next bit could take a few attempts. Remember to stay crouched at all times, otherwise he will see you and blast your ass. And we don't want nothing in our ass. Nope, it's an exit hole only, not an entrance. So crouch up behind him. You can probably just see a bird in the background there. So we're going to need to scare that bird, but as soon as we do, we need to turn to the left. So scare him and immediately go left. Because he will spot us. So there it is. So we're going to shine his light straight away. But now he's going to be sort of focused. So now we can come to the sort of foreground. There's going to be another bird. But when that goes away, he's going to start walking. So make sure to sort of stay a safe distance behind. Not too close that he can see you. But just enough of a distance behind. And this is a particularly, maybe a tricky bit. So when he shines his torch now at the background. So wait here. So he shines his torch at the background. Keep sneaking until he gets to this sort of spotlight. And then run for the hole. Absolutely make sure to absolutely run for the hole. And then what we can do then is just make sure to sneak on forward because he's going to do a shotgun to the ass right there. Now basically if you run when you're by the side of him or a little bit too early, he will see you and he will spot you. So that is why I sneaked until the spotlight before running. So that's just a little hint if you're sort of getting stuck there. Anyway, now we can carry on. We're not done with him. Um, I, I don't know why he wants to kill us so bad. Literally, what have we done? What have we done? We're just two little midgets going for a walk here. Yeah. Douchebag. Anyway, stay... Uh, no, we should be good. Sorry. So we, we are good for the minute. He is uh, going to be popping around eventually. But for now, what we can do is just pull this lever. Again, holding right trigger and going left. And then little compadre right here is going to jump eventually when she stops looking down. Thanks, Hon. So she was just about to leave us, but what you need to do is just uh, head to the edge, press the Y button, that basically calls her over, and what you need to do now is head back, get yourself a sprinting start, then make sure to press the A button to jump and hold the right trigger. And then just ho keep holding the right trigger until you're up. That should be good enough then. So obviously hold the next for a sprinting start, press A to jump, hold right trigger. So before heading to the right, head up onto these sort of open boxes and open crates right meow. 
as you can see, there is a little hat, which will now be the second of the level. Like I said, there's only two in the level. So climb up all the way, jump backwards, and then what you're going to need to do, climb to the top, jump on it a couple of times, and that'll be hat two out of two for this level. And then, like I said, if you want, put it on. If you don't, no worries. You can keep the ugly bob head bag on. Right, so we are going to be coming up to Farmer John once again. So uh, head past this box. There's going to be a box in the middle of this uh, path. So hide behind this first until he shoots, then sprint for your life. Hide behind this box again until he shoots. As soon as he shoots, climb up. So again, make sure to climb up and then hide behind this TV. He is going to shoot again. You might sort of be able to make it, but every time I tried, I got shot square in the butt. And that hurt, i.e. death. So once here then, just go across this sort of wooden beam, that's going to break. And then once again, it's a kind of a chase scene now, so you need to start sprinting. As soon as you can go, start sprinting, and obviously avoid the holes. We don't really like going diving in big holes. Nice, sort of smaller, regular holes would be fair, just fair. <laughs> anyway, sort of head underneath this decking right here again. And then all we're going to do is basically follow the way, as soon as he starts walking, of course. So, crouch on here. Now, what you're supposed to do is wait until Farmer John uh, shines his light to the right, then start walking, and then press the left trigger to go underneath the water. Sadly, our little compadre kept pushing me. So, as soon as he shines his light in the middle, you have to crouch underneath the water. You can die, of course, but that sort of just goes to show you that if you sort of go to get caught sort of halfway between, you can make it to the other end of the log. So just keep on swimming, keep on swimming, keep on swimming, climb up. We need to be pushing this log down. As soon as we push this log down, head back into the water. You've got a little bit of time to do it, but as soon as it starts heading down, run. And then just end up back in the water, and obviously he knows you're there, but for some reason he doesn't just come to the other side and shoot us dead. Crouch once again, left trigger underneath the water, and... Go until you are on the right side and safe from view. There we go. Happy days. So just wait for a moment until he uh, pops off. Oh, baghead. And it's going to be another hide behind the box, otherwise you're going to get shot in your ass sort of sequence. So we're going to jump down, head straight for the box, which is going to be straight in front of us. Because he's going to somehow see us there. Shoot, run. Hide behind this box again. As soon as he shoots the box, bam, run! And then just run through the open door. Now this bit is very important for a missable achievement. You've got to make sure that you are wearing the hunter's hat, which is the hat that I'm wearing right now. But make sure to be wearing it. This is very, very important. Otherwise, you'll have to come through all of this section again just to get this achievement. So make sure to uh, put your hunter's hat on, jump up, uh, press the right trigger, hold it onto the gun. And then what we're going to do is, uh, so again, press the right trigger to hold the gun again. And you're my god. We just shot his balls. God damn it, brothers, you don't shoot somebody in the dick. But he's taken care of, and like I said, with the hunter's hat, we should now get said achievement, fair prey. If you, again, if you didn't, if you weren't wearing the hunter's hat, sadly, you will have to come through all of this level again just to do that, and that is a pain in the old butt stash. So hopefully you would have got that, and that is fine. 
So now it's basically just for the next couple of minutes now, uh, push this door on. It's, it's kind of like a Titanic uh, sort of reference, if you will. Except this time, oh, Kate Winslet wasn't such a bitch. And both of us can get on, even though uh, Leonardo DiCaprio could have gotten the door as well. I'm just saying. Anyway, enjoy the scenery for a couple of minutes. It's going to be a few minutes until we get to the beach, but this is basically the end of the level now. Nice. So then, before we keep heading right, if you head to the background, you can probably just see in the distance a TV or something that's washed up ashore there. What that is, is an actual glitching remain. So the closer you get, you can see it there, glitching remain, four out of four. So that should get you the wild kids achievement for getting all of the glitching remains in this chapter. Once we're done, head through the door to end the first level. So here we go then, chapter 2, possibly my most favourite chapter out of the game, as we see a nice uh, sort of hanging body from the TV there, that's nice. Uh, but yes, this is the school chapter, so for now we are just going to continue running right. Uh, you can pick up a shoe and throw it if you want, but that was really just for uh, no reason. So we're going to continue, like I said, just heading to the right, we're going to head up through this little cubby hole bit which we're going to need our compadre to do now after we go through this door so don't fall through the uh, hole there jump on top of the TV uh, get your hands on that swinging noose, and then you're going to have to actually uh, swing to the right, then to the left, kick off the TV a couple of times, and that's going to slam us right up to the top there. So once we magically make our way up here, go through the doorway on your left, and through the next doorway, and there's going to be uh, you're going to have to push this TV down, actually, so again, hold the right trigger, of course. Push the TV off, that's going to get our compadreato at the top there. And, of course, she is going to be on the top, so we're going to have to climb up the top. So, 
Uh, I actually just changed my hat there um, for, for literally no reason at all. So you don't have to change yours. I'm just doing it because I want to wear every hat in the game. So head up the stairs, get yourself a sprinting start, just like uh, in the first chapter. Sprint, jump, hold the right trigger until Compadriat grabs us and flips us on. Now there is a glitch in Remain. This one's very easily missable. So as we head up the stairs, head left through the doorway again where Compadriot was. Head down and then you can just see the glitter and remain looking over and there we go. It's the first one for this level. So make sure to be gla uh, grabbing that glitter and remain before heading to the right and across the beam. Hmm, lots of no head hanging people in this game with no feet either. It's just clothes. How's he doing that? How's he doing that? Anyway, we're going to head through the door and this whole TV is going to start messing with our brain signals. So you need to go up to it. Obviously slowly, but you can't really sprint at this point since it's giving us a migraine, etc. And what you need to do, uh, we'll automatically put our hands on it. But you, you have to actually adjust it with the left stick. And it can be absolutely random. So press either up, left, right or down. As you can see there, until it starts giving off this sort of white beaming aura, uh, you can sort of tell what you have to do um, and where the transmission is at its best point. So once we do that twice, you just need to walk up this sort of slow-mo hallway for, like we did at the very, very beginning of the game, or like we've seen at the very beginning of the game, and then it'll automatically just snap back to where we were. Worst TV show ever. So anyway, once we get fudged up with the TV, head on up, climb on out of the window, and we are going to head right... Man, we are really, really short. We are extremely short. How did that happen? Years of radioactivity, I expect, or... Hmm. Anyway, I bet we're still hung like a horse, though, aren't we? Right, so anyway... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, move this bin out of the way with compadre and go through the gap in the fence. There's a couple of things we're going to do here before we head through into the school. So head into the sort of background of this area, right into the corner. There's going to be our second glitching remain. So head all the way back, right up next to this dumpster and next to this bike. And that is where second remain, glitching remain is. And then this is another important one for a missable achievement. So this one is very important. So what we have to do, we're grabbing the first out of two hats as well. So head up the steps. Don't go in. We're going to actually head up onto this dumpster right here. And as you can see there, we now have the creepy looking football hat. It's not soccer. I don't say soccer because it's called football. Ball to the foot. That's why it's called football. Anyway, make sure to put it on. Kind of looks like uh, Jack from... The Nightmare Before Christmas. So that is the one, the second one there. So make sure to put that on. Jump down. And then what you need to do is just run through the goal. And that's it. That's where we unlock this missable achievement. So you'd think all you'd have to do is kick the ball through the goal. Which <laughs> seemed pretty obvious first. But no, you put on the hat. And then you run through the goal. This isn't as missable as the last achievement in the first chapter. But, you know, just in case you don't want to have to come back to this point later on. So, we're climbing up the rope, we're going through the window. And once again, we've got a couple of things, a very couple of easily missable things to do. So first of all, head up. And we're going to be heading into the doors in the left. The doors, you can just see it there, just slightly ajar. Now, uh, skip the ball for now and go ahead and grab this paper aeroplane. Now, this one is very important. This one, well, it's important for the achievement, but it can be easily as missable as well. Compadre will bring a can with us. That's very nice of you to help, but we, we, we just don't need it. Okay, so, you know, pretty useless. Anyway, head back to where the window was, and you need to sort of... You, basically, we're going to throw it out the window, but you need to stand in such a way where we look actually up at the window. So, yeah, it's sort of about... 
in between the sort of chest of drawers right there, that's where you need to be. You can actually, if you're standing a bit further back and it still goes out the window, you won't actually unlock the achievement. So you'll just have to restart that bit if that's the case. So anyway, this is where the puzzle begins then. We don't actually need to shut the light off. I'm just showing you where we need to go and what we need to do. So you just see a little light protruding out of the picture there. So it's literally a simple case of going back through the door. Picking up the ball that is in the middle of the room. There's baseball. American baseball. Head back out. So obviously head right to the picture. Wait until our character there sort of looks up. Then use the A button to throw it. Uh, oh, Well, a compadre there tried throwing it as well, but... At the minute, she's about as useless as a condom machine in the Vatican. Bit pointless, but we got to take her with her anyway. So, jump on this obvious-looking part of the um, middle of the room here and just jump on it, like a trapdoor kind of thing. A couple of jumps is got what it's going to take with both of us. We're too skinny. We need some fat. We need some fat on us to get through that. And then we're just going to head slowly to the right, crouch down, keep heading to the right for the minute. So, obviously, head down, uh, pull this vent out, and then head through that as well. We're going to start getting into trap country soon. As in, try not to get your head smashed off by a swinging trap. So don't worry about this bit then, that is just our main sort of antagonist in this level that we have to deal with a little bit later on. So it's those swinging buckets there that are going to start coming down. And as you can see, one of the floorboards is raised just a little. So head to the very back, right up against the door, click on it, and then the swinging bucket will sort of come down in the middle there. Head underneath this light, you should be fine again, but there's going to be another swinging trap, so... Crouch under here for the moment and come out of the other side, obviously. And we're just going to head through the door. There's actually going to be two swinging buckets that are going to try and fudge us up. So obviously stay right close to the locker as much as you can. There's the first one and there's the second one. So there we go. Just wait until they stop swinging. I do believe they can still flood you up, even if they're moving at a snail's pace. Uh, so head up for now, but don't go too far ahead. You can just see one of the raised floorboards ahead of you. So very slowly, yep, there we go. Step on that floorboard. Locker will come down. We don't die, and we can live to see another day. So the trap's going to mess with us now. So uh, crouch, very important to crouch here. This raised floorboard looks like it's the trap, but it's not. It's the one just two in front of us, and that is why we should have been crouching then. See, see, it was just a mess with you. But now we can actually climb up and go on through to the other side. Head through the door. And then just keep heading to the right for a few secs. Until, well, you'll see. Right, so that was weird. So we've got uh, uh, little children with Kinder Egg heads already smashed in, kidnapping our compadre. We somehow escape a locker, even though we are tiny. But what you need to do then, first grab this hammer, get as close as you can to this bully, and then smash A to smash his head in like a Kinder Egg. <laughs> Kinder Egg could, could do with a couple of those right now. So bring your hammer into the next room. We're not going to be hitting the bully. Sort of stay just here. Use the hammer, then immediately go left and up. He's going to run onto the trap, and the trap is going to head smash his noggin in as well. So, here we go. It's nice and easy. Like a kinder egg, once again. Be careful not to touch the bucket, just in case somehow it fludges you up. And then head onto the chair, and then head through the door. 
And before we head on to the right, head to the third locker right here. Open this boy up, and this is where glitching remain number three is going to be. It may be hard to see in the dark, but he is there. And you know, Mono, you start doing all this little yeah, stuff with your head, which means you've got that one. So, head to the right now. We are going to be coming up to a sneaking section where we're not supposed to die. So, if you stay here, wait until the teacher... You'll be able to see it. Very obvious. There you go. You'll have to wait until the teacher there is looking at her chalkboard before you sort of head to this little area because she can actually spot you. As you can see, somehow, even though she didn't see me, she spotted me from... I, I kept that in just to show you. Um, that That's why you've got to wait until she's looking at the chalkboard behind her before you sort of come to this little area. But... What we will be doing is getting another achievement here. Now, this one may take one or two attempts. Um, but basically, wait until she turns around. Keep crouching. Just keep crouching. Until you get about halfway between this second and third desk. Up. Make a run for it. Make a break for it and head into the door on the right. Jump up on the uh, bookcase on the right. And then jump off the bookcase when it's falling down. If that crushes three bullies, that will get you the Bully of Bullies achievement. So as long as you manage to uh, destroy all three... I, I don't think there was a way that we could actually um, get past that bit without being killed. So, you know, you just die, make it a little bit easier for you. So hopefully you would have got that, you know, first time. It's not too difficult at all, but, you know... Sometimes the uh, game physics want to mess with you. So, head towards the second desk when the teacher turns around to the chalkboard and then hide underneath it. For some reason, the kids can't see us, which is... No, oh, it comes in handy. Oh, just wait, 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 master bait, wait, wait. And then soon she turns around, head towards the third desk. Now, you probably can just about make it through the door... But, you know, better to be safe than sorry. That's why a lot of people use a condom. Uh, no, <laughs> better to be safe than sorry. Just wait until she turns around and then obviously wait until she turns back to the chalkboard before making your exit to the door on the right. Of course, like I said, you can pan the camera with the right directional stick if you want to see where she is. So we will be making noise. This is another bit we'll have to do quite quickly. You see the box just in the background there? So we're going to head up once again. And then as soon as it starts falling, obviously jump off so you don't die. Grab the key as quickly as you can, obviously with the right trigger, and keep hold of it. And then head to the box in the background there. And I, as you can see, I just made it before she gets her noodle neck on the go. Which, of course, here is not creepy at all. Oof, does look like a giant unused penis, that neck, but there we go. So, so we've done that bit. That's not too difficult. And this um, little vent has opened up for us, so we can sneak on through. Again, this is another sort of waiting and sneaking section. Oof. Hey, baby, you want to spank me with that? <laughs> no, you probably hurt me. She's got a big forehead, too. So, just wait until she walks sort of all the way over to the desk on the left-hand side, and then we can sneak to the second desk. And obviously wait underneath it. So, just keep waiting, just keep waiting, just keep waiting. I'll tell you when we can move now, but for the minute, just keep waiting. So as soon as she walks over to the desk on the very right, now we can make our move. So head sort of, well, up into the foreground, the sort of left-hand side desk. And as soon as she starts walking more to the right, then that is our cue to leave. There she goes, and that is our cue to leave. Uh, by the way, I wouldn't mind teachers doing that to me, because teachers these days are a lot more beautiful than when I was in school. No offence, obviously, to all teachers who taught me. 
They hated me. <laughs> anyway, we're going to head to the elevator. We can now use it. Not that I was a bad student or anything. I was just obviously really good looking and nobody liked it. <coughs> and that's lies. So, now we are up here. Doesn't mean we are done with the teacher, though. She's going to be on our ass like a fat kid on cake. So this is another missable achievement. So basically, we need to get this guy's attention. To get the achievement, we need to not hurt him. So jump, wait until he gets fudged up by the chain, and then make a run for it. Grab the pipe in the middle of the room, press the right, tr hold the right trigger, and then hold the X button to sprint as well. Go to the right-hand side, and then hopefully you will get the merciful feet achievement. That is for not hurting this boy. And then we can just break on through to the other side and head on through. I mean, technically, that is borderline child abuse, keeping a kid sort of chained up. But you've got to make your life a little bit easier sometimes, right? <laughs> oh, God. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Seriously and honestly, no, that was just a joke. I'm very sorry. So we're going to head on up now. And once again, we're going to have to be dealing with Noodle next. So we're going to jump down. Bottles are going to smash. And then we need to head to the box in the background. So immediately, as soon as you jump out... Head to the box in the background there and just wait. For some reason, her erection neck, shall we call it, seems to get longer by the minute. I wish it were that easy. But wait until she goes back down. I really don't know why she just doesn't look in the box, but makes our life easier. Now, this is a bit that can potentially confuse people. All we can do with this jar is pick it up. So there's obviously a box that, if we run past it, we can actually hide there. But of course, we can just pick it up with the right trigger and then put it down. Lovely, easy, sort of saves 5 to 10 seconds there of erection neck. So head up this rope again. Um, we're going to have to do the same thing. There's a box, open box on the left-hand side that we're just walking past. That's where we're going to be hiding. So head up. As soon as you push this plank down, head back down and then into the open box. So immediately make a sprint for it. And old Viagra neck is going to be on the way up again. So that is this section done with. Now we can just head up and through the small vent on the right. Lucky we are small mind, otherwise we wouldn't be able to get any places. Maybe it's because this because we're small, that's why they're trying to kill us all the time. Hmm. Anyway, I'll leave that open interpretation up to you. So, once again, obviously just keep heading on through. Sort of to the right. And we're gonna be getting our second out of two hats for this level right now. Oh look at that, she's decided to stop teaching and she's just come to stalk us again. Pervert! Anyway, grab this ladder, move it to the right, uh, just a little bit to the second bookshelf right here, and then climb on up. This is where the second out of two hats is going to be. Again, like I said, you can obviously you choose any hat you want. I'm just doing it so we can wear every hat in the game. Or you can just keep wearing the ugly bob paper bag on your head, if you want that. Uh, atmospheric one going on. But that is what we got. We got Lord Buckethead this time. So, if you want to use it, hey, more than welcome. So, jump down. We're going to move the ladder over to the right once again so we can climb up and head up onto the bookcase. A bookshelf. Or book something. You know, the, the sort of table of books on it. That's where we're heading. Now, this is another important bit. Viagra Neck is going to see us, so we're going to be chased. So, run, run as fast as you can. Crouch under here. I'm the gingerbread man. And now this is more of a sneaky part. So jump up onto these books and then head to the uh, head up and then to the right. All the way around. Now when we jump onto the next part of books, immediately head to the right. Because she can't spot us. Stay here though. Stay in the shadows. And as soon as she starts moving her noodle neck the other way, start heading to the left. Again, she is trying to look for us. She will come around to where we were. She can smell us, which is probably weird. But stay here. Don't worry about that. Soon she starts moving back, then head to the right. So, again, sometimes with... Uh, it, it can be a bit tricky, maybe, 
with her spot on you if you've just left it a little bit too early or too late. But once we've done that, we should be good. So there goes Noodles. She's on her way. Right, so we will have to deal with her again just a little bit later on. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called Little Nightmares 2, I suppose. Um, but tra drag this box. We're going to sort of drag it to the door, and then we're going to head through that same door. She just came through, or went through. So we've got a bit of time away from sneaking now, so we're going to head up the stairs. Uh, we are going to need a key to get through, but we're going to head to the left first. Left and up, and then we've got quite a depressing glitch and remain. So there he is sitting, he's contemplating life. So he's got a noose there and a couple of beer bottles, so that is quite a very sad and depressing one. But make sure to grab that glitch and remain anyway before we move on. From here, just go straight up to the other side of the staircase. And then we're going to head down and to the right. We're going to be doing a sort of a little chess puzzle now. So first things first, grab this head, stick it on. And then what you can do then is jump and grab the door handle to get through. Once through, make sure to grab the chest piece head once again. Like I said, it's it, it's a puzzle, but it's a very small puzzle. But you can potentially easily miss things. So head up to the sort of left uppermost part of the chest piece. Jump up and then grab the next chest piece. The one with the little dot on it. Looks like a little pear. Looks a little cream pear. Uh, but we can just leave that for now. And uh, we'll come back to that and finish it a little bit later on. But head down and to the right. Basically, if you open up this, well, jump up on this blind right here, that is the puzzle of what you've got to do. So you've got the cream pie on the top left, the cross at the very bottom, and the piece that we picked up earlier on the right. So very easy. So grab the dot. Sorry, this is the pie looking one. The other one was the cross. So we've got the cream pie. And obviously... You've just seen the uh, solution for it, so obviously it's going to be the, the one with the dot on the top. I really don't know any chess terms and stuff like that, so that's why I'm going with <laughs> these loose terms. So the one that we grab first, put it all the way to the right. Obviously the one with the cross, put on the bottom. And then put the one with the dot, the cream pie looking one, on the left hand side. Now this is one where a lot of people forget there's a tiny little light in the top right hand corner there which is just <laughs> which has just appeared and as you can see take the chest piece off and it stops working i actually didn't mean to take the chest piece off but there we go just good to show you anyway so we're going to jump up onto that right hand side we're going to jump up onto the light and that is actually a little switch that is very easily missed that one but for some reason, somebody decided that this key wasn't worth keeping in their pockets. It was worth keeping in a very, very small chair in very, very small locked room. But now we can head back downstairs, go to the right and head into the kitchen area. So welcome to the kitchen of nightmares. <laughs> uh, no, actually, we're going to head down the stairs, move this tea tray out of the way. Uh, what we're going to do is head into the door that the tea tray was blocking, because this is where we're going to find our next glitching remain. Not as beer bottled up and noosed up as the last one, but does look a bit shivery and a bit nippy. Although I suppose if you've been sitting in a freezer for a while, it can get potentially a little bit cold. Especially downtown with button mushroom penis and stuff. Anyway, what we're going to do now is <laughs> head to the right, push the tea tray all the way to the right, and we're going to head up into the vent.
And here's a bit that may take you two or three times, took me three times, but we're going to have to kill or beat these four bullies all at once. They're going to come at you sort of one at a time, but you have to be quite quick with it. So, jump down, grab the ladle immediately, kill this first guy. Second guy's going to jump off the oven at the background, so you can sprint towards him. I tend to run towards people to give me a bit of momentum. Third one comes to the right, and the fourth one jumps down from the top there. So move back, sprint towards him, and oh, oh, oh I almost get fudged up there. So th that does, they do come kind of quickly, um, but... You should. They, they always go in that order anyway, so it's never like a random thing. So, this bit's nice and easy. You just stick on the bully's head. You don't have to keep pulling the right trigger, by the way. You can just um, move through all these bullies now. A couple of things to look at and explore if you if you would like to do that. Plenty of things. Bit of music going on in the background as well. A few Easter eggs, etc. By the way, if a bully just pushes you out of the way, so you can't actually die or anything at this point. We're just moving all the way to the right. Until we get to the other side. Hey, pick up those potatoes, damn it. And if this isn't a deterrent to not have kids, well, I don't know what is. Obviously, your kids shouldn't end up looking like Kin broken kinder eggs so hey kids are great have them they're awesome so we've gotten through <laughs> to this bit anyway we're going to put our lord Buckethead head back on and this is a, a another easy bit we just need to grab something from the top to be able to push this button to get through uh, this is kind of like a very linear sort of platforming section there's no way you can get less uh, lost so you're just sort of heading up we're obviously going to head onto the plank and then obviously jump across, climb up, jump to the noose again, try not to get your neck caught in that, it could hurt a lot. And then give yourself a couple of momentous swings and then press the A button of course to jump off. And then we found the brain in a jar for some reason at the very top of a shelf. I don't know why it's this far up, so pick it up, press the A button to throw it off. And it should always end up in the same place anyway. So uh, jump on this hook to slow yourself down. And then simply just pick up the brain, push it on the button. Job's done. Go through. So we're going to have to sneak past Viagra Neck once again. So we're going to head through the vent here. Obviously wait until she walks to the other side. She's putting all these lovely yum yum hearts in a jar. Hopefully that's not human hearts because, hmm, bit wrong. So as soon as she starts walking to the right, wait until she gets there. And then we can start making a move to the middle sort of shadowy bit of cupboard there. Also, you'll have to wait until she starts making the, I don't know, she's making a sandwich, heart sandwich or something. And then what she's going to do then is head to the right into the next room. What we're going to do though is just wait a little bit because again, if you go too early, she will be able to hear you and stab your ass. I've never been personally stabbed in the ass. But again, just like being shot in the ass in the first chapter by Farmer John, I assume it would hurt. So just wait here for about 10 seconds or so. And then we're going to head on into the next room. Uh, for some reason, this door is the hardest one in the game to push. For whatever reason, we've got no muscle. Come on, get through! Come on, come on, come on. Okay, honey, we made it. So, we don't have to actually hide underneath this table here. We can actually just head to the middle and climb up on these drawers. We're going to be hiding behind uh, these drawers bits of jars and things but again it's a case of just waiting being patient waiting for it to move around so as soon as she turns around head to the uh, next sort of area just to the right wait here though because she does turn around quite quickly as soon as she starts moving to the right then we can head uh, to the foreground and head to the next little area 
Now, you can make a jump for it here, but I get a bit paranoid, wait until she goes to the left, and then I just do it anyway. So she starts drawing on a chalkboard, so you should be good to go as soon as she looks in these drawers right here. Now, that one can be potentially tricky. You could probably do that all in one fell swoop, but, you know, paranoia and stuff. Especially if you're a weed smoker as well. Man, that would be insane. So we're going to head up, go through the vent again. A lot of vents in this school. I suppose it helps the kids not die, I suppose, through um, ventilation and gas and stuff. Jump down, head through the right again. And now what we're going to have is a lot of kids trying to attack us, and they're going to come from all angles. So, pick up the hammer, obviously you're always holding the right trigger. Don't worry about this girl, she's going to die, but this guy, you need to hit him first. One, another guy's going to jump down, so make sure to hit this kid as well. So there we go. Like I said, it's always worth just sprinting to a kid, and then just before they attack, that should give you enough momentum to kill him. So, head down. One kid is going to jump from down here, so kill him. Another kid's going to jump from behind you, so make sure to kill this kid. So, as we are coming down then, another kid is going to come out of the second locker. So, when you go past it, watch out. The kid comes out of the locker, make sure to kick his ass. And then, of course, this other kid you can easily see comes around the corner. Make sure to smash his kinder egg and noggin in. So we can drop the hammer for the time being. Don't go sprinting forward. You can crouch and come to the sort of foreground as much as you can because there is another raised floorboard, which means another swinging trap. So that obviously is worth avoiding. If you head into the next section, there is an auto save that happens, but we see our compadre. Getting strung up by two little bullies, so we need to grab the hammer once again. Now, when you kill these two bullies, try not to hit the wood too much. Uh, because the bullies will kill our compadre. So, kill Kinder Egg 1, kill Kinder Egg 2. Sadly, there's no surprise in there. And then we can just bash the wood in. <laughs> Luckily, it's not morning wood. <laughs> So, you think we'd be done with this chapter, right? Wrong! We're not quite done yet. We are coming up quite close to the end, but... For now, we're going to head to the right. We're getting another missable achievement in this room. Very familiar with the first Little Nightmare. So, jump up on the piano and just run across the keys a couple of times... ...until the achievement pops. Again, those who played the first Little Nightmares will... <coughs> ...be very familiar with this particular one. There we go. Monotones. Oh, yeah. And then what we need to do is grab the lever in the back. Lever it all the way up and then drop it. Then we both need to climb on it, me and our compadreos. So jump up and jump on it a couple of times, and that should get the piano through. Yeah, man. Right, there we go. So now we go into the next room. That's a big noise. Now you'd think Viagra Neck would be able to hear that and come and slice and dice us, but it's not the case. So head to the left there. You can see a little vent just in the background. Get compadreoso to give us a boost. Now, be careful here. We're going to have to crouch straight away. You can see this Kinder Egg Bully right here. So, be very careful. Just going to get the keys off and Compadre will give us a little distraction. So, don't grab the key yet. Grab the hammer, which of course is in the foreground. And then you can simply run straight up and smash its noggin in. And of course, when I said hammer, I obviously meant pipe. Then we can pick up the 
key and compadrioso will help us get through we can now open the door to the right right Now, this is very interesting. What we think we'd have to do is kill this guy, but you just wait and enjoy what Compadrioso does for us here. Jesus, that just reminds me of The Simpsons. Stop, stop, he's already dead. Like shooting someone another 50 times after you've already shot and killed them once. Calm down, compadrioso. They are dead now, huh? So, you can grab the hand, swing her about if you want. <laughs> just for a laugh. But there is an achievement that we need to be grabbing a bit later on, and that's for holding her hand for six minutes. Uh, but again, we'll just wait until we get that a little bit later on. You could do that by pressing the right trigger, by the way. So, obviously, as you've just seen, pulling the drawer off and then climbing on up. We're going up the stairs now. We are coming very close to the end of the chapter, actually. But there is one more slight little puzzle that we've got to do. So, we need to be getting through the vent at the top right there. So, Compadrioso will give us a boost up. And what we're going to do is uh, push this little box down, which is going to help her come up as well. And then we are going to climb through the vent. But of course, it is worth noting, only do this when the music plays. This is a very important part where you have to either have your headphones on or your music or the volume turned up loud. So Noodle Neck is going to be playing the piano and we can only do things when she is playing said piano. As soon as she stops, then you've got to stop. You've got to stop dead in your tracks, otherwise she'll obviously hear us and smite us, oh smitey one. So, if you can always tell when she starts to slow things down and stops. She slows down the piano and then stops completely. So you'll sort of know the tune as you go through this tiny section. But when she starts, we're gonna head down and jump down again, head to the right. You can sprint and do whatever as long as the music's playing, but it's only when she stops, you've got to completely stop. So use this lever. <laughs> See? You can be, the timing can be quite tight, but as soon as she starts, you use this lever, we're going to drop that down above her head. Can you think you just cut it and sort of kill her, but there we go. And then, again, always better to be safe than sorry at this bit, rather than trying to rush through it, always better to be safe than sorry. So as soon as she starts, push this box. And again, surely these people have peripheral vision. Why is that not a thing in a lot of video games? Peripheral vision is just nada, non-existiento. We're going to push it all the way to the left. Oof, see, almost get caught again. Come on, play! There we go. So push it to the left, we're basically just climbing back up now. So there we go, so climb back up. Now, I actually sort of almost messed this up. So again, it's one of those better to be safe than sorry parts. But all we're doing is just climbing back up and then climbing across and going through the vent. But a little chase scene is going to happen. So she's going to hear us. As soon as we crouch in, and get through this part of the vent. Keep your finger or thumb on the X button and just run for it because God damn it, that is creepy. Eyes and trying to eat us alive. Head up and all we're gonna do, just keep, keep holding the X button as quick as you can and get the hell on out of there. Make a jump for it. Hold right trigger, of course, and somehow she misses it from there. But that'll do us lovely, so. You can stick your Viagra where the sun don't shine. Which is ironically what a lot of people who use your Viagra need it for. 
Um, <laughs> so anyway, we've done that bit now. So finally, we have done this bit. Now it's just an easy sort of way to the end as we jump out. We'll be getting out, grabbing our last glitch and remain as well. So we're going to head down. It's sort of a short burst now, really, to the end. So you see this dumpster, what we're going to need to do is just push this dumpster sort of forward or up to close the lid. And then we are going to push it all the way to the right until it sort of hits that rock, as you can see, just to the right of us there. That should be enough then for us to jump up and jump up onto the other side. Now, if we have a look in between these two buildings, this is where we're going to grab the last glitching remain. So make sure not to sprint all the way to the right. Look in between these two buildings and a sad figure of paper arrow. It kind of looks like um, a reference to It the Clown, doesn't it? Georgie. <laughs> it the Clown style language. Meh, whatever. Uh, so head through the door and... Oh my gosh, hello, there is a little yellow coat there. Now, if you didn't play the first Little Nightmares, you could be forgiven for thinking that that was a, once again, a reference to little Georgie from It the Clown, who then you know, gets eaten by the clown and stuff. Um, but it is actually six. If you have played the first game, our little compadrioso is actually six from the first game. So, ah, surprise! That's nuts, isn't it? So now we can call her by her name, which is six. Now, I am getting another achievement here, and that is for basically calling six 26 times. And I just keep mashing the Y button until it unlocks here. So, again, you could do this at any point in the game, but... Uh, Six is basically just going to give us a lift up. And I again, I'm just going to mash the Y button 26 times until the achievement unlocks. Again, you can do it earlier, you can do it later if you want, but I just get it done now. But once we head down, so there you go, that is the achievement unlocking for me there. But once we head down, um, obviously we can't go into the vent yet because make sure to grab six with you there. Okay, honey? There we go. So gr um, grab six. Push the vent through, and that is the school chapter over. Now we're on to the hospital. Ugh. Hospitals. So here we are then, the hospital, and this is a chapter with mannequins, and by God, don't I hate mannequins. But we're just going to have to worry about that a little bit later on. So for now, obviously this is a quite darker chapter, uh, but we're just going to be heading all the way to the right for now. There's going to be a little platforming section again, um, very easy one, we're just sort of following six, there's, there's really nothing too complicated at the minute.
So this is going to be like a key mechanic for this level. We're going to have to be taking fuses out of one. Of course, remember to keep holding the right trigger to keep hold of said item. And putting it into another fuse box to get through. So that's going to be one of the, uh, like I said, one of the key features of this level. So there'll be one on the other side. Just see where the light is. Um, of course, if it is too dark or anything, you know, turn up the brightness. Turn up the brightness on the game as well. It definitely all helps. Do not jump here. Do not jump because six is big fat butt. Just broke the elevator a little bit more. So if we jump again, we die. So just head to the right through the vent. And it's going to be incredibly dark as we get out, but we can see a torch or a flashlight, whatever you want to call it, on the floor. Now, just to use it, you've got to press B once, just to use the flashlight, and you can still do everything that you've always been able to do. So sprint and hold items, etc. So when we get through the jail cell there, or the cell door, head up, and you're going to see glitch and remain number one for this level. So obviously it does get dark. Um... Can be a bit tricky to see now and again, but keep pr just pressing the B button to use your flashlight. We'll be using it literally for the majority of the game. So we're going to head to uh, oh, sort of down to the right and through into the next area. There's going to be uh, we're going to be attacked basically by a little hand. It's kind of like a chase scene, but it can attack us as well. So head up now, sort of where this IV bag and this wheelchair is. And then what we need to be doing then is heading to the left with this already lit room. There's a couple of achievements that we'll be getting. The hand thing we'll be coming to a little bit later on. So for now, see the vending machine? The vending machine even? Jump on that and jump on it about six times. That is going to get us the hungry achievement. We only need one can to progress, but we need six to get the hungry achievement. Because, hey, we are sure we need to get... We are growing peoples right now. But grab a can anyway, when you're done, when you're done, and then throw it at the switch to open up the cell door. Try not to miss and be uh, like a bit of a mong like I was there. <laughs> and we're going to have another little TV section. So it's the same sort of thing. You can sort of jump uh, <laughs> to get like literally two seconds ahead. But it's the same thing. You use your left directional stick to... Uh, transmit until a white uh, white glow comes on the screen. Of course, it's all going to be random again for you. And just go through the little small hallway until we are done. And we get blasted back out. Headless mannequins, my favourite. At least these buggers don't move. So we're going to head to the right for the minute and head into the next room. And there's another admissible achievement we can get now. So see the x-ray machine? We're going to turn that on with the lever right here. And then what you need to do is head behind the x-ray machine and hold hands with six. Make sure she's not uh, touching you inappropriately there, but that will get you the ex-best friend achievement. But you've got to make sure to be holding a hand for that achievement to unlock. So, now we can head into the next room on the right. Basically, there's a couple of teddy bears with a key in it. But before we do that, we're going to head up onto this sort of um, bookcase or cupboard or whatever it is right here. And there is the first out of two collectible hats to grab. 
So make sure to grab that. And once again, if you want to wear it, you can of course wear it. You should get the half hat achievement as well for unlocking uh, basically half of the hats. But we are going to be uh, wearing this teddy bear hat for a missable achievement as well. So it's always worth just putting it on now uh, for the missable achievement. I'll let you know a little bit later on. But for now, we're going to grab this bear, which is directly below where the collectible hat was. Now, I don't think it's random. I'm pretty sure this is the... Uh, bunny or the teddy bear with the key in it at all times if you want to check have a look uh, put it behind the x-ray pull the lever and what it should do is have a look and it's not poop in there that is a key so that's good so now we can grab said bunny uh, six has also got an item but again like I said she's about as useless as like I said earlier a condom machine in the Vatican so, head through the elevator, push that. What we're going to do is incinerate Bunny. But this is where I told you, you need to be wearing the last hat that we got. The sort of weird looking one-eyed teddy bear hat. So again, make sure to put that on before you put this Bunny in the incinerator and burn it. So, pop it in again. So, make sure you get the teddy bear hat on. Put it in. Pull the lever. R right. Okay, thanks for that, Six. Fantastic, thank you so much. There we go. So if you've done that, got the teddy bear hat on, you've now uh, incinerated the bunny and everything, that should now get you the Toys Are Not For Kids. Or Toys Are For Kids, sorry, <laughs> achievement. But that will get us the key that was inside him. And now we can just head up the elevator once more. So we're going to head left and we are going to be heading up the stairs now and now is the time we're going to be coming up to these little creepy hand sections so they are going to chase us and they do attack us but you can always tell when it's going to attack you and it is very very easily avoidable of course always worth not um, being caught because they'll, they'll still kill you in sort of one hit but uh, I will show you what I mean so this is a sort of scripted chase sequence first you're uh, going to have to come past this first room. Six is basically going to be useless and sort of stay in that room. Uh, what we're going to do first is head up when we get into this corridor. And there's going to be another glitching remain. So make sure again to grab this. There was basically the door that we came in front of is not. You can't actually go through there. So you head up, grab this glitching remain. And then we can head back down past the entrance and the exit we just came through. And now we can head through this door door which of course we're going to need once more a little bit of help from our friend six the compadrioso now if you could do that tidily i would be very happy so this is the scripted hand chase sequence so just keep running again we're going to be sprinting all the way through this part so as soon as you move this box out of the way the hand becomes free so, obviously, don't doodle, don't dawdle, don't mess around, just sort of get through it. Uh, this hand is going to uh, appear. There's going to be one that appears straight in front of us, so make sure to avoid this one. There we go, so that one can actually attack you. And then, obviously, just make sure to climb up. Yeah, screw you, buddy. And then just quickly climb on up. Um... But again, he's going to be uh, following us anyway, so, you know, don't dawdle, don't mess around, just get through it. For some reason, he doesn't tend to attack us here, which is always good. And it's going to be the same, but so we're going to head up this corridor, go into the left-hand door right here. And now we're going to have to beat this hand. So again, what he's going to do is try and attack us, um, sort of head on here at this point. So again, try to avoid him. They'll always stop before they attack you. So, obviously, we're going to need to climb up on the table. But he kept doing my head in. Yeah, piss off, man. Piss off. Uh, like I said, though, easily avoidable. But now we've got to jump down. And like I said, now we've got to kill him. So, what he's going to do is there's going to be this little bit of light area. So, grab the hammer. Now, what the hand normally does, he'll always jump back twice. 
And then he will try go to attack you the third time. So, obviously, you can try and hit him. Um, but we'll always jump back twice, and then he'll climb forward. As soon as he starts cr uh, scrambling forward, then you can hit him. Because that means he's going to attack and he won't jump back. So again, he will avoid. He will avoid, and then he'll start crawling towards you. That will be your best time. Keep hitting him here, though. We need to get another missable achievement. So before you move on, hit him about four or five times until the and stay dead achievement unlocks. And then we can grab the fuse. And then we can just head to the left and then head past 6 Obini again. Oh, but in fact, what we've got to do here is actually move this box and then smash it through a window. So, easy, cheesy enough, though. So we're going to take it to the left, we're going to go past six, who seems to be just... I don't know, I don't know what the hell she's doing with that hand. In fact, I don't want to know. We're going to head out the door, now your first reaction would be to put it in one of these two fuse boxes. But do not put it in there, we're going to walk past this bit for now. And we're going to head to the left, and there's going to be another fuse box that we're going to put this fuse in for now. And we are just about to start getting into mannequin territory. So we're going to pop this in, and this door is obviously going to open. And we're going to head through, and if you have a look on the back wall, there is going to be a bit of sweet corn that we can pick up. Now this is a missable achievement, so we're going to grab that sweet corn, and basically we're going to head all the way back down into the incinerary, incinerary room? Incendiary room? Yeah, the bit where we got the key out of the teddy bear earlier. So we're going to head down. Go to the right here and down the elevator. And then, just like we did with the teddy bear earlier, just throw it in the hole and then pull the lever and that will get us the achievement for burning the popcorn, I think it's called um, Movie Night, or Movie Night Sorted, or something like that. But anyway, you should now get the achievement. You don't have to have a look in if you want, but... Oh, uh, look, it's actually popcorn. No, the achievement is actually just called popcorn. Right, that makes a lot more sense. So, yeah. Now that that missable is won... Uh, that missable is done, even. Now we can head back up, and we can go through the room that we just found the uh, sweet corn at. Right then, okay, so with the mannequins, they are going to start moving now. Um, have a look at the background. Six is going to flick us through the hole. <laughs> Interpret that what you will. Um, through the hole, not in the hole. But anyway, these mannequins are going to start moving now. Obviously, we're going to need our flashlight on all the time. And you move the flashlight about by moving the right stick. That's how you move the flashlight about. So, what you need to do is turn your flashlight off, turn the light off and your flashlight. And then he's going to start moving. So as soon as you do that, there we go. As soon as he starts moving, you can probably just see him. Turn your flashlight on now, and he's going to stop. But you need to keep your light on the mannequins at all times. Obviously, as you can see, if, you, if he's in the darkness, they move. So just try and uh, keep your light on the mannequins at all times. We're going to have to get quite... We're going to have to get through quite a few mannequins later on, but there is one big hint and tip that I can show you and tell you to be able to get through them. So for now, we're actually going to head up to where the mannequins are. We can't actually get through the door here. And again, don't worry about these ones because these buggers do not move. God damn it, I hate mannequins. And go through the left gap in the door here. Okay, so 
a few mannequins are going to attack us here. Now, of course, what you've got to do is try and keep sprinting forward as much as you can and using that right directional stick to obviously shine on the mannequins. So one is going to attack us from the left-hand side here, so just keep spinning it around. That is the best tip that I can give you at this point is just keep spinning the your torch around because that will come in mega handy. They shouldn't get near you then, so... That is the best tip I can give you at this point. But this bit isn't bad. But like I said, just keep spin keep absolutely spinning it round. And you should be good. And this is definitely one of the easier bits anyway. I did die the first time. Very stupidly ran into him. And then just try and get into the gap as quick as you can through the door. Lovely. And obviously move forward so you don't get fingered by the mannequin. That also hurts. So these are not going to move either, uh, but what we need to do is jump up onto this sort of table tray looking thing here and get through the vent. Sorry, I was just practicing the uh, right <laughs> directional stick, how to use that with your torch. Alrighty then, we've got a couple of missables coming up, so when we jump through this hole, come down through on the bed, make sure I look at the back wall where this eyeball is pointing, make sure to grab this piece of cheese. Now this is a missable achievement, so back wall, eyeball, pick up the cheese. Before heading down, we're going to head up, sort of into the background, and there's a little bit of a hole that you can probably just see. And then we're going to head left into the open door. There is an open door on the left we can head through. You can see a glitter remain, but what we're going to do first is use the A button to throw the cheese down the hole. That is going to get us the objection achievement. So get that and then grab your next glitch and remain as well. And then we can move on with the game. Now, for me personally, this seemed to be the hardest bit. But what I, I can give you the biggest tip... So what we're going to do first then, a bunch of arms are going to come out of every jail cell. Obviously we've got to avoid them. So what I do is sort of stick over to the right a little bit. Then head over to the left just a little bit more when you know you're past them. Because one long arm is going to come out of the right. And now it's just a case of getting through the path. Now, very importantly, for me anyway, this worked. Put your index finger on the X button to sprint so you can use your thumbs for the left and right directional stick. So you've got a mannequin coming out behind you and two mannequins are going to come out to the left of you there. So obviously you're going to have to use your light to shine backwards. Keep shining it backwards because when it's dark he's still come after you. But when we get out of under these beds there's going to be one more mannequin that's going to pop out. There he is. So you just uncrowd yourself, sprint to these drawers and climb up as quick as you can. So there we go. It's, I know that was all a bit uh, sort of fast paced there, but that was the biggest tip I can give you then. Was put your f index finger on the sprint button so you got your thumbs to be able to control your flashlight and your movement. That was the easiest way that I could do it there. So, ooh, once we're in this room then, go up to the left hand corner, pull this box out of the way. And you can see a little crawl space we can obviously crawl into. This one is going to house the next glitching remain so again important that we grab this one this one is very easily missable so make sure to grab this this will be the last one of the chapter actually as well so that's nice so like i said if you grabbed all the glitching remains that is the achievement that she that you should get there so now we've just got to trick a cheeky mannequin god damn it i hate mannequins creepy as douchebags uh, but what we need to do first is pick up this bar of soap and throw it at the switch to open up the door. Because for some reason, Six didn't come with us because she's uh, a security cat. So we're going to head forward a little bit. What we need is the wheelchair, but we got this, like, I don't know, dinosaur-looking mannequin thing. So we need to get him out. And the way we do that is uh, by turning off the main light first. So, as you can see, even with your flashlight off, because the main light is on, he is like, do, 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 I'm not real. So, we're like, huh, huh, we'll show you, buddy. So, turn that off. Now, you can turn your torch on for the moment, just so we are aware of sort of where he is. We need to sort of bait him out, goad him out. So, I'll see, there he is. When you turn it off, he's going to get up, and you can just see him start walking. There he goes. 
So if you want, you can you can either run backwards and then turn your flashlight on, or you can sort of keep turning it on and off while you're walking backwards. As long as you get him into the main area of this room, and then are able to turn on the main light. There we go. So that's not too bad. A bit a bit of clickbait there. Never hurts anyone, according to every bloody news outlet in the world now. Douchebags. Anyway, ignore the dead thing in the bath. That's also very creepy. But we can now push the wheelchair forward. And now we can crawl through the space. So this was meant to be the hardest uh, room in the game. Or in the level where you've got to go through the mannequins. And obviously try and avoid them best you can. But a little shortcut I found. So if we head up to the background in the screen. Basically, we're going to go around the mannequins, and only, like, four of them will attack now. Instead of it being eight or nine that attack us, coming from all angles, only four are going to attack us. So, you've still got to be very careful, because through the pole, as you can see, the one just starts walking. So, again, you've got to be very careful. Just keep shining your flashlight sort of down and sort of to the left and right, so they're not coming towards you. Uh, but this way, instead of going through there and having about 10 trying to come at you from all angles, this way was just so much easier. So, just as soon as you get into this corner, you should be good now, because they're all just trying to attack you from one side. And then, all you need to do is crouch under, and you are good to go. But move forward, keep walking forward, because the hands are going to grab you. Happy days. There's also a missable achievement in this room, so we're going to grab this medicine ball. And then we're going to just throw it back into the mannequin arms. They're going to throw it back, but the missable achievement will be ours. I don't know if it tries to uh, throw it at you. I, ne I never bothered with that, but that is how you get that missable achievement then. So hopefully that potential being the hardest room in the level made it a hell of a lot easier. So now we're here, we're going to jump up on the stool and now we're going to jump onto this lever. Without missing would be a, a preferable thing. So, yeah, like that. And now we've just got to wait for the chair to explode here. And with that, that brings out the fuse box. And then we can just throw it into the hole. Throw it into the... There is a name for that, isn't it? I just can't think of it right now. And Six will pick it up from the other side. Now, what I don't get is... If Six could do that in the first place, why, instead of just doing all that with the mannequins, why couldn't I have just gone in there and, you know, yeah. Oh, I suppose it wouldn't be a game then, would it? So you don't have to actually grab the fuse, because Six will do that for us. Cheers, Hon. You are delightful. Yeah, I suppose it would have made the game a hell of a lot shorter and this level a bit easier if we could just go through the hole and uh, grab the fuse on the other side. Hmm, nobody likes doing that. So grab the fuse yourself. It doesn't matter whatever fuse you grab, six will grab the other one anyway, which is very nice. At least we've got a helper hand for once. And then we are going to plug it into the main elevator, pull the lever, and we are on our way. So there's not an awful lot going on in these corridors. We're going to go down, down to the right, and then go, go through a hole in the door. But at the end, we're going to be attacked by two of the hands that we had to kill earlier on with a hammer, if you remember. Now, again, obviously, if you weren't too good at it, it it's going to take just a little bit of practice. But again, it is easy to avoid. When you know the attacks of the hands, you know it's easy to avoid. And then you can just kill them so I'll show you how it is now so we're gonna to get to the hand the one of us is going to attack first and the second one's going to attack later on so grab the pipe the hands gonna come through six is like <laughs> actually screw this because there's the one so it's gonna try and attack us straight away so you need to move first and then 
you can try and attack it. But it's then going to do its two jumps and then try and attack you for a third time. So that's what it'll do. It'll come out, try to attack you straight away. So avoid it first. Now, avoid it. And then it's going to do the two jumps. You can get a whack in if it's uh, good enough and you got lucky like I did there. But that is what the attack's like. So again, move because it's going to attack you. Then you can try and hit it, but it's going to jump back twice. And then for the third time, it's going to try and attack us again. So I only avoided that because uh, Six just decided to throw that goddamn plank in my way. And she's just in my way. Piss off! There you go. That's what gets her out of the way. Just whack her in the head. So again, it's it'll jump back. It'll jump back. It'll attack us. I've had to avoid that again. <laughs> Didn't get lucky with this one. So it's going to jump back and then... Oof, so I got kind of lucky with that one there. So yeah, thanks to Six being in my way. Hon. So again, move because it will attack. Try and hit it, but it will jump back twice. And then for the third time, it will attack you. So yeah, that is, that's always going to be the same pattern on the hands. So hopefully you can get through this bit with no issues, really. And six pulling the thing off the door there, that is all scripted. So it's not timed until it's only when we kill these two hands that she finally goes, Oh yeah, actually, I'm good now. Thanks! But you thought we were done, huh? Right, take a look at those masks if you want. Creepy as anything, but we are now into crouching mode. We've got Dr. Death. No, not Harold Shipman. We have a creature that sort of hangs from the ceiling. So, from this point anyway, we are going to need to be crouching and a lot stealthier. We haven't seen him much, but the next part is all about stealth and not getting bummed with a syringe. So there he is. Look, he's like a... Know, like a spider, caterpillar kind of thing. Uh, you disgust me anyway. Right, so. Obviously, climb up. Eventually, we're going to climb up and then climb down. Now, you're going to have to stand behind... We'll just wait behind this box right here. And then, when he goes the other side, then we're going to move on to the next box. But again, of course, we are going to wait... Because he is going to come back and he is going to turn around. So we need to wait for him to go the other side. Like now. And then we can carry on going to said right. Now wait under this first bed. Very important this bit. Wait under this first bed. He basically checks the <coughs> patient on the second bed and he will spot you. So hide for a moment. So, as soon as he begins moving, that's when we can move as well. So, we're just going to keep going. He's basically going to go down the opposite end of the room. So, he shouldn't spot us. So, just keep going. Go around this chair right here. And we're going to be diving to the beds on the right-hand side of the room. So, obviously, you know, try and stay crouched at all times. You know, that would help not making a noise. It definitely helps with not being caught. So just wait here for a moment under this first bed again until he is checking the patient. <laughs> well, I say patient. I mean mannequin something. As soon as he starts moving up, as soon as he goes past you, there. Now is our time to go. So we're going to go past the second bed and just hide under the third bed for a moment again. So when he is in the corner that we're in, he's actually looking at the wall. So we're going to grab the cube, remember to hold the right trigger, and just hide under the bed for a second. Again, for some reason, he sees he see six all the time, but it makes no difference. He's only after us. Douchebag. So as soon as he's over in the left-hand corner, then we can start moving into the second bed. So when he's checking out the pipe dildo, or whatever the hell that looks like. Uh, <laughs> so just keep waiting for a minute. He's going to start going to the opposite side of the room now. So, obviously, we're not going to... We're just going to have to keep waiting for a second. Man, where did this doctor get his goddamn credentials from? So, as soon as he's down, now down the other end of the room again, then we can start moving. And we can now just head to the right. 
So we can just climb on under here and then we're going to head to the right. But what we need to do is open the door and then we need to run and immediately head to the left. So from here, immediately go to the left and hide underneath this sort of towel tray right here. I actually almost messed it up then by accidentally sliding. So yeah, try not to slide and hide <laughs> straight away under this towel uh, rack or something right here. And eventually he will not put... Oh, hi, Six. Yeah, no, it's fine, you know, just get us caught, you douchebag. Tell you, we're not as good in this game as you were in the first one. But anyway, once he is gone, now we can move on a bit. So that, that part was the sort of hardest section, I personally thought, anyway. Um, even though it's not that difficult at all, it just kind of gets a little bit easier from here, which is always handy for us. So let's climb a de climb climb up. Oh, screw you, six. Thanks for holding it open for us. Ugh. And then just keep on heading to the right at the moment. Also, make sure to obviously avoid the holes, because if you drop down one of these holes... Oh, there he goes. He's going to... Well, he's going he's gonna to finger you, basically. Nobody wants that. Not in my rectum. And then once we come out of here, if we head to the sort of top right of the corner, this is the hole that we can jump down without being, um, you know, fingered, etc. So we're going to head to the left now. We're going to be grabbing another hat. So have a look at this open, um, uh, what's it called, dead person thing. And then, <laughs> and then pull it out. You know, like a tea tray for the dead people. Sorry, I can't even remember what it's called. You jump in. Six is actually going to help us for once. And push us over to the other side. So we're not going to be caught by the doctor or anything for now. Um, so what we need to do then, head sort of to the left and then up. And we're going to open up this bottom dead person tea tray thing again. I'm sorry, I really cannot remember what it's called right now. But the next hat is in there anyway. So again, right trigger. And like I said, you can put it on if you want. If you want the ugly bob. Uh, bag head, you can do what you want, but this is what we got. It's the mummy type tape looking thing. So, chuck it on if we want. Damn, we look good. Yeah. Anyway, from here then, we're going to be heading to the left. It's like, a, again, this is a sort of small puzzle. So we are going to be pulling the corpse out. And with that one, jump on top and then jump on to the next one. That's going to sort of pull the next corpse down. Luckily, it doesn't land on us because then we be dead. Head to the other side of the room. Once again, we're going to pull the corpse out of the bottom right-hand corner. But why is this so unnerving and disgusting seeing, like, dead feet in your face? Alive feet is bad enough, but dead ones just, ugh, moldy maggot type stuff. Anyway, jump up, jump across, and then what you need to do is get a good running start, dive off the chopping board right here, and you should then uh, jump up onto the top corpse, jumping up, and there is the key, as we can see. So, uh, be careful, obviously, not to jump too far down. Grab the key, and then we can go to the, um, go back, and then go to the right into the next door. So we are coming to the end of the chapter now, finally. Goddamn mannequins. So, once we're through the other side, what we're going to do is just climb up this um, shell, uh, up these shelves right here. And we, like I said, we are coming up now to the last area. Not a lot to do left. So, jump across, head down, and then jump across again. And we're going to go through the vent and up. Right then, it's time to get our sneaky sneak back on. So, obviously, left trigger it. We'll go through the vent right here. Because I think, for some reason, if you go through the door, he will see you. And I'll tell you why. Because he turns around 
And we are going to hide under this sink. He's going to kind of pointlessly wash his hand, I'd say. You know, he looks filthy, but, you know, washing your one hand, that'll do it. So we're going to sneak under the table. And we can... You can probably get away with just going straight to the other side. But, once again, like we're in a condom, better to be safe than sorry, even if it doesn't work half the time. So, <laughs> yeah, top advice, huh? So now he turns around again. Now we can move on. Oof, mate, he is going to town on that dead mannequin body. And we need six. So come on, hon. Get your biceps working. Thanking you very much, Anos. And now we're on to this next room. Now, if we head to the back here on top of this towel tray, and we're going to head up these stairs. Basically, our objective there is to basically put our patient into cardiac arrest. So we're going to head down. Now, make sure to keep holding the right trigger button. Get the hold button ready because we need to be grabbing this lever right here. And as soon as that happens, immediately go and hide underneath the towel tray once again. Because... So he's going into <coughs> some kind of arrest. Not the best arrest. Or electroshock therapy, or I don't bloody know. Now what you'd think is, he'd turn on the lever, check his patient, and then go away. But as soon as he turns around the curtain, we can then head out. And we've basically got all the time in the world now. So I'm obviously doing it quick, just to, you know, get through the video. But it does take a while, I think, for him to come back out. But anyway, get out this dead person. So, wheel him out, and then what you need to do, just uh, climb up to the right, and then we need to be grabbing this fuse. Be careful not to actually bump into it, because for me it actually glitched out. So stay on the sort of right-hand side of it, and then press the right trigger, rather than walking into it. Like I said, for some reason it glitched out, and that annoyed the crap out of me. So, now we are going to have to be careful, because as soon as we put this fuse in, a chase scene is going to happen once again. It's another easy chase scene. But it will happen. So as soon as you pop it in, get ready to keep your finger or your thumb on that X button. And as soon as that cell door opens, we are out of here. So we're going to uh, slide under here. Sorry, couldn't think of it. Jump up off this tea tray here. Jump down again. Again, you can slide if you want to, if you think you're going to get crushed. But head down. Obviously head to the right. Jump up once again off this tray. And then we're just going to keep sprinting, keep sprinting, keep sprinting. Again, you should be fine. Uh, he can't catch you somehow because he's slow and shit. But now we're going to keep crouching. Keep crouching for the minute. Like, literally, he could just jump to the other side and, and eat us. But there we go. He's not that... He's silly. And what you need to do now, we're into the incinerator room again. So what you need to do now is immediately jump into the incinerator. We are coming up to a missable achievement as well. Get down immediately and then head to the left. Oof, man, that is blubbery. So what we need to do for this missable achievement, Six is going to help us through, but do not, do not turn the incinerator on. This is very important for this missable achievement. We're going to lock him in, but do not. Just head straight for the elevator on the left. And i got to repeat it again. Do not turn the incinerator on and burn him up because that will kill him. We're basically just... Um, going to leave him alive and that is the achievement which is nice for us isn't it even though he's trapped and he's probably going to die although he's got a lot of blubber so he probably survived off his own fat for a while but yes so as long as you didn't turn the incinerator on you will get the missable achievement and the achievement for completing the chapter hooray the mannequins are done up your guts sugma mannequins sugma So here we are then, on to chapter 4 out of 5. And now, like I said, I haven't been holding Six's hand an awful lot throughout the game. But there is an achievement for holding Six's hand for, guess what? Six minutes! Very original. So that is what we are going to do now. We're just going to get it out of the way. So if you haven't got it yet, I advise you to just press the right trigger when you're next to Six. Hold her hand. 
and just wait until the achievement pops. Um, again, like I said, I didn't do it an awful lot throughout the game. Done it with the X-ray and stuff, and but you know, so yeah, just just go ahead, wait for six minutes and wait until the achievement pops, and then I promise we will move on. So then, there is the achievement, and now we can move on. Now, after all the uh, sneaking about and trying to avoid being eaten to death, this is uh, more of a platforming level, this one. So, so it's definitely uh, not as bad. It kind of gives us now a nice little break. Obviously, we'll have to do a bit of running around and running from enemies, etc. later on. But, yeah, for now, it does definitely give us a little bit of a break. So when we enter outside for the first time, instead of going right, we're going to head upwards. And you're going to see this big hole in the ground. Once again, we can go for a little bit of a hole dive. <laughs> now, if it's easier, just to make things a little bit quicker, release the right trigger, then hold it, then release it and hold it. Just gets you down the ladder a bit quicker. But this is where our glitch in remain. First one of the level is going to be. Make sure to pick him up and then climb all the way back up the ladder obviously <laughs> so from here now a lot of it like I said is just sort of a bit of platforming we're just going to be running right for quite the majority of the level so it's so we're going to go into a building and we're going to be heading up some stairs. It's just, yeah, everything is just very straightforward at the moment. Which, again, is a nice little break. After, you know, ma mannequin death country and all. So once we head into this room here, do not worry about this uh, skin butthole face guy. He's just going to sort of run off. Um, but they are basically the sort of main enemies of the level. <laughs> he sticks his head in the TV. Man, that must have been a really good show. But now that enables us to jump in, jump on top of the TV and then jump out. So we're going to head up, climb up the ladder. When we get about uh, up to the top, we can jump on to the next side and then jump in through the window. Like I said, not an awful lot going on. Remember to press the B button to use your torchlight or your flashlight. Don't worry about the people there. They are so focused on the TV, which is what basically society is as a whole, which is kind of frightening, but also they shouldn't really so many good TV shows and movies then, should they? So don't worry about that woman watching absolutely nothing. We're going to keep on heading to the right. Six is going to help us out with the door again. If you want to be a disgusting perv, you can try and have a look at the old woman in the bathtub. But uh, yeah, let's not do that. Is it? We're just going to climb through the crawl space on the right. Yeah, I, I love old saggy boobs, but uh, personally, not for me. Anyway, what we can do now is jump onto the elevator, and we have to jump onto the right-hand side, but be careful while doing it, because if you don't get enough of a run-up, that will happen. So I left this death in just to sort of show you that you do need quite a bit more of a run-up. But like I said, the good thing about this game is if you die, the checkpoints are very generous. So let Six do her tang, and we're going to get more of a run-up, and then head down, lovely jabbly. This time then you obviously need to jump to the elevator, press the lever, and then what we need to do is, while it's going up, make sure to get a good run up, we need to jump onto the right. So jump to the right now, there we go. And then you can hang on to these sort of bits of wood and then climb up while six goes up. That's nice of her, leaving us alone again. Man, that chick really hates us.
So when we get to the top, go past the elevator and the lever for a minute. There's an office type room on the left hand side. Open up this bottom drawer and there's going to be a key in it. Oof, Mono, I wish we could grow one day. You would make this whole experience a lot easier. So we're going to jump down, obviously, open up the elevator because there's nothing else to open up. Unless it's the key to my heart. So romantic. And then what we can do is pull the lever in the elevator and then immediately run out. So when you do that, immediately run out. And then that's going to go to the bottom. What we need to do is then pull this lever to bring it back up. And we're going to go on top of the elevator. That's uh, this puzzle here. So soon as you've pulled that lever, wait until it sort of jumps up or starts coming back up. When you can see it, there you go. Get onto the elevator. And what we can do then, when we're in this next section, head to the left first and pull this box out. There is a glitching remain behind this wall. This is another one that is quite easily missable if you're just used to running through the right and doing all the storage progression. So pull the box out, head under this crawl space right here, and that is another glitch. Uh, by the way, I think if you do miss the elevator, I'm pretty sure you'll just be able to put the elevator back down and then go up. I'm pretty sure... Mm, this is a nice looking... This is a lovely looking room of death. Hmm. Uh -uh. So we are out of there now. So you make sure to grab that glitch and remain before we head on. Keep heading up to the right. And what we can do here, instead of climbing up, to go to the story progression, we're going to head sort of into this barn or this house or whatever. Do that to climb on the boxes, climb through the window, and there's going to be the next glitch and remain straight in front of us there. So again, two glitch and remains very close together, so make sure to grab these before we head on up. So climb out the window if you can. Come on, shorty. Get your ass up, boy. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. So we can now start climbing up this uh, little thing here try not to go <laughs> through the hole <laughs> like I just did there and once again it is another easy lovely little section you're just climbing up and then 6 is going to help you by the way if you wanted to speed run this game it's only made more difficult by the fact that 6 is so gosh darn slow which is pretty annoying for those speedrunners But we're going to use the lever, 6 is going to fly across, and then what we're going to do is, once again, make a hell of a running jump, make sure to be holding that B, uh, that right trigger button as well. So sprint, jump, hold the right trigger until we get up, and then we'll be climbing up the ladders. Now, once we get up here, now I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure a pipe with potential boiling hot water leaking onto an air conditioning unit is is not very safe. Again, not an expert, but there's a lot of health and safety officers out there who would be having a stroke looking at that, I expect. So, uh, oof, yeah, not good, not good. But anyway, we're up the pipe, we're through the window. And then once again, it is literally just holding the sprint button, continuing to go right. A lot of things are going to start crashing and falling. But uh, as for story progression, we are going to fall down a hole and a little cutscene will begin. As we pull Six's legs out from underneath her.
Oh, god damn, I got that flashlight broke. Well, screw it, we didn't need you anyway. <laughs> anyway, once more, it is another right style kind of thing, but we are going to be coming up to quite an important part of the story now where all this lovely little bit of platforming, it's about to change. So we're going to head up. There's nothing in that right room, so don't worry about that. We're going to head up, and there's going to be another TV for us to head into. Same sort of thing. Obviously, just um, use the left stick to use the transmission. Once again, it's going to be all random for you. And then we're going to walk up the slow hallway. Only this time, we're going to open the door for a surprise. Not a good surprise. It's not like a puppy holding chocolate or something like that. Nah. Crap it, it's more like Slenderman 2.0, or The Thin Man, as they like to call. I'm going to go with Slenderman 2.0, because it's better, but what our problem is now, he's actually going to be coming out with a screen. So, as soon as we regain control of Mono, we are going to be making a sprint for it, so down and to the left. So at the minute, they're like, hey, what's going on, bruh? And he's going to start coming out of the TV, probably more creepier than the ring-style stuff. And then we're like, <laughs> screw this shit. So basically, he's got like this magnetic force. So you, you can't get too close to him. As soon as he comes out of the TV, six is already gone. So, you know, you'd think we'd sprint as well. There we go. So sprint directly to the left. We're going to be going out of this room. Head down once again. And we'll be going into the room on the right, which we didn't go in earlier. And then immediately just hide straight under the bed. While Six, for some reason, she's been following us the entire game, wherever we'd be going and hiding. And this time she decides to hide under the table. Man, you're so stupid! <laughs> ah, well, that's just goddamn great. Slenderman 2.0 took six, and now we are left alone to fight our own battles. Basically, like we've been doing throughout the entire game. Anyway, by the way, that doesn't count as a glitching remain. <laughs> so we're going to head out. We're going to head up. And basically, what we're going to do is just go straight back up to the TV. We're going to get a new mechanic for this level. And that mechanic is the ability to travel through TVs as long as two TVs are on at the same time. So I will show you what I mean now. So we're going to climb up this bookcase and this old rusty chair. Head up to the side, obviously. And as you can see, there is two TVs here. One on the left, which we're obviously going to go around. So just go up to it and uh, Mono's automatically going to smash straight through it. And there we go then. So we end up outside. So what we're going to do, use the lever then to push the TV all the way to the right hand side. Yeah, close enough, left, right, yeah, i get there eventually. And then obviously what we can do is go back in through the door, go through that other TV and we will end up the other side. Clever stuff, huh?
So if you climb up this makeshift ladder, once again, it is like another little platforming section. So everything that you should be used to by now, uh, in terms of jumping and swinging on ropes and hooks, etc. So you shouldn't have any issues at this point. And if you do, um, I'm very sorry, you can't finish the game. <laughs> Just joking, I wouldn't do that, do you? Actually, that hook there took me about five tries to get across. I don't know why, but that was the most struggling bit that I did struggle with in this game. Somehow. Really don't know how. So, I was just about able to finish the game by, <laughs> by doing that. Anyway, once we're in here, we're going to head down. And basically, we now have a new thing. Just like the flashlight, we've got a new remote. And basically, when you're looking at a TV, you can press the B button to turn that TV on or off. Now, of course, this will come in mega handy later on. But, as you can see, when you turn it on, now we will be able to go through to the other TV to end up at the top. And like I said, this will be one brilliant mechanic we're going to be using and abusing later on. So, head down. We're in the sort of mail room now. Head down into this hole below. Before you go to the right, we're going to head to the left. And there's a little hole that we can sneak on by to get the first out of two collectible hats. This one is the Postman hat. And once again, just like earlier, it is definitely worth putting on the Postman hat on now. Because we are going to be coming up to a missable achievement which requires you to wear said Postman hat. But I'll let you know, of course, when we come up to it. But for now, we can actually head through the little crawl space uh, in the right. We'll jump through it. So once we're here, make sure, of course, the TV is on, on the right-hand side there. So switch that one on, and you've got this uh, little trolley or something that we can move. Now try and put this sort of in between. You see the doors at the top? So try and put it in between the, the two doors there, sort of in between the gap. Obviously, what we're going to be doing then is going through this TV and jumping across onto that box through to the other side. It's another easy puzzle to figure out, but here we go. So... Leave the TVs on, because if you turn it off, there's a chance you might soft lock yourself out, and then you'd have to restart a checkpoint late, uh, from earlier on. So head across the lamp, swing across. We're going to jump up onto this chair. Man, short stuff. And this is why we've done this there. Now we're at the top, so obviously make sure to line yourself up with the box lovely, and then go to the other side. Obviously, oh, it's always worth holding the right trigger, just in case you need to make a jump up. Or you end up almost missing a jump up, as it were. So we're going to climb onto these boxes, head down with a ladder. Proper zip lining stuff, yeah! And now, when we get to this point, again, do not continue to the right. We're actually going to be jumping out of the window. Jump down and then head up to the background, to the next window on the right. And this is where the final glitching remain of the entire game should be. So, of course, if you've been following the video, you will unlock the achievement for getting all glitch remains in this level and all of the glitching remains in the entire game. Of course, remember, I will have timestamps below if you are missing one anyway. So, pick up this little statue right here as well. Give that a, tour, a twirl and a throw. And then when that breaks, we will unlock another achievement called Unladylike. So you should be getting three achievements in this room, two related to Glitch and Remains, and one for throwing that statue there and breaking it. So just make sure you've got those three before we leave. Like I said, I'll have timestamps for all collectibles and achievements in the comment section below. I'm pretty sure I said that about three times there. But, you know, you got it. You got it. So we're going to head back in now through the window. Now, this is where we start distracting the enemies. We need to head into the kitchen. For now, she's all good. Keep heading right until we head uh, hit the outside. It's going to be a TV, so press the B button, of course, to turn that TV on. Oops. Paused it for no reason there. Then what we can do is head... Back into the living room where the woman is. Sort of uh, hide behind this chair a little bit. 
Uh, because if she spots you, she will catch you. So when we turn it off, she's now going to hear the other TV go to the right-hand side. And then we can move on. But if she does spot you sort of in between that, she will fudge it up, son. So now turn the TV on and head through it. This will obviously put us out the other side. Obviously, we couldn't have done that before because, like I said, she would have eaten our ass. And we haven't wiped in a few days. Um, I'm just joking. Anyway, head to the right and head up the ladder. And then just keep heading up. So, like I said, it's a little bit of distracting, so what we need to do then is obviously turn the right-hand side TV on first, hide behind this sort of pillar right here, turn the TV that the guy's watching off, your butthole skin face, and he's going to go, oh, let's take a look at this, and... Yeah. Man, that is just... That is society as a whole, mind, isn't it? You get so mindlessly brain-dead with TV that we just can fall off cliffs, which... Pff, like I said, worth it because there's so much good crap on these days. So we've now done this little section. Well, like I said, we can now head back to the right and sort of head down. Little platform section again. Why that guy just jumped off the roof, we don't know. But anyway, ignore them. We're just going to jump down. And what we're going to need to do is head to the right, jump out of this window, and then push the TV off. There we go. So with all your steroid strength, give it a good... <clears throat> you know, as long as you're in the TV, for some reason I was trying to push nothing off then. So that doesn't, won't actually collapse. Obviously, I just rush to the side, you know, just to sort of rush anyway. Turn the TV on and jump through said TV. And then press the right trigger. Hold it. Hold on for the dearest of life. And then we can climb in. Now we are going to have to kill and shock an enemy. So basically that lever right there is going to turn the electric on. And it's going to do it in this water. So we need to go all the way to the right. Pull off these two boards, and then as soon as this last one comes off, immediately sprint to the left and then turn the lever on. So go, 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 go! Butt face is coming. Quickly jump up, quickly turn the lever, and that will electric him beautifully. So, good job. Butt face is dead. Turn the electric off, obviously, because then you'll die, and then that was just all pointless. Then we can continue on to the right. Okay, so there is a, this is a, a little bit of a puzzle. Uh, it's 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 probably a bit easy when you get used to it, but head to the right and then jump a couple of times to get through this garbage chute right here. And then this is the point we now need to use our postman hat. So from this point on, if you haven't wear if you're not wearing it, make sure to wear it right now. Postman hat, postman pat, postman pat. Oh yeah. There, uh, open up this suitcase, there's going to be a little package inside. We need to grab this package. Uh, for some reason, she wouldn't get out, so I had to throw it. I tell you, that's just, that, that, that is just a UPS down to a T, that, isn't it? Got your package, fudge you, have it. Ah, my face. Etc. Obviously, i just done the action, you didn't see it. Anyway, go all the way to the left. And then, automatically, this guy will be like, Oh, Wes, thanks, bruh. And then, that will be the achievement. So, obviously, you need to be wearing the postman hat to uh, have unlocked that. So, now then, now, we can, now we've done that, we can actually crack on with the puzzle. So, obviously, push this box all the way up to the lever so we can actually jump on it. And obviously, make a bit of sense. <laughs> So when that opens, then we can actually um, jump on the TV, 
turn the lever, and we can actually just stay in the elevator until we get to the top. Now, because I was, um, I turned it on and accidentally went through it myself, um, but you don't actually have to go through it, so it's fine. It's no worries if you do this. Uh, you can just jump back through, because we do, like I said, need it to get to the top. So jump on the TV now, and then put, uh, grab the lever once again. This time we'll have to be quick, so as soon as we do that, go through the TV again. And then quickly run to the elevator and jump on it. And that is how we complete that puzzle. So it is very nice and easy, but obviously, if you'd have just tried jumping down, you would have died immediately. So that's how you do that puzzle. Okay, coming up then, I think we've got a little bit more distractioning to do here. We're just going to pull this box out of the way and then jump over and crawl through. And this was a part which did give people a few troubles. So we need to jump on the toilet and jump through uh, the door right here, obviously avoiding the electric. Now stay as close to the door as you can. So as soon as we turn the TV off, we need to run straight back and jump straight on the toilet again. And then with that, she gets electrocuted and dies, job done, everyone's happy. But if you're struggling to do that, what you can do is sort of uh, go by the chair. She will actually run around the chair, giving you a little bit more time if you want, or if you need it, to be able to jump back on the toilet. So there are a couple of ways that you can do that, but for me anyway, that was the easiest way, and I think it could be for you as well. But like I said... Do the whole chair trick as well. So we can do there, grab the stool that she was protecting from the TV, and now we can actually just jump through the door. Jump down, and then we're going to head in to the right in kind of like a supermarket thing. Um, so again, we've got a collectible hat in here, and we've also got a puzzle to do to try and get to the next area. So, first things first, go all the way to the right and see this shopping trolley. Or again, of course, if you're American, shopping cart. Because I am very inclusive of all countries. Um, <laughs> drag it, of course, as usual, holding the right trigger button, all the way to the left here. Because you can't climb up, you actually have to jump on the trolley and then jump up on top. Which I knew that and I was still trying to climb up anyway, so yeah, close enough, huh? So there we go then, and then if we just head to the back and on top of the parcels is going to be the second hat collectible. Now there is one more hat that we need to get, but we get that automatically at the end of the game. So, if I just have a little a little look and a little sneaky peek at the old menu right now. You should only have one hat left, which is the bottom one. The two that are in the middle are DLC hats, so... Do not worry about them in the slightest. If you haven't got them, do not worry. They're just DLC hats. The one at the bottom, as long as there's only what looks like three left on the screen, then you will definitely be getting that hat collecting achievement. So for now, what we're going to do then is bring the trolley all the way down to this ramp. Do not go down with the ramp, because uh, cause that will kill you if you go down front facing. So go to the back and push it down. And then what that'll do then, the water is electric, so don't jump in. But this should now sort of go into place. Head to this little tray here, and then we can jump on the trolley and then jump over to the other side. Now, this bit is, it, again, it's not too difficult, but if you do end up messing up, the checkpoint is you basically have to start it all over again. And it is kind of a longer sort of puzzle than we've been used to lately. So we're going to head through this gap into this small room with a ball in the middle. Head up. And head to the right. And when we get outside, there's going to be a little lever that we can switch to turn the electricity off. So now we can jump back down. So the electricity is off at the minute, so we can jump into the water. And uh, what we need to do is grab this trolley now and then put it the other side of this sort of uh, these sort of shelves. Uh, you. There's kind of a way that you've got to grab it. Otherwise, the trolley's going to start, like in real life, start catching on absolutely nothing like it's doing right now. And it's going to start spinning out control, very much like real life shopping carts. So, obviously, we need it nice and straight in the middle because we have to turn the electricity back on to be able to jump over the other side, which is where the TV is. 
Obviously, TVs need electricity. Everyone knows the drill. Everyone knows electricity. But we need to get this shopping cart then in a nice straight line, which is why you're seeing me struggle to <laughs> absolute death with it then. Hmm, interesting. Come on, come on. Well, goddamn finally, bruh. So, what you can do, if you want, I just done a little practice jump. Because, you know, you think, it, is it in the wrong place? See, now what I did there was a practice jump because I knew that something wasn't quite right. So it's maybe worth doing if you think, right, I need to just move it over just a touch. Because you don't want to be turning the electricity on, doing that, and then jumping and dying. Especially when you've got to do this whole thing again, it would be a pain in the butthole. So again, what we need to do then from here is just go back into that same room with the ball. Turn the um, electricity back on. And then obviously we can start moving forward again. So when it's back on, what I advise then is the boxes next to you, jumping up on there and going back onto the sort of main floor area. Uh, because if you try to jump with the electric in the water with no shopping cart there this time, it's going to end badly, okay? So this time, of course, make sure you're ready to jump. There we go. We're all good. And again, and as long as you've done that, you should have no problems now. Get into the other side of the TV. Still be quite careful when you're jumping down not to go too far. And then head on through. And that is this little puzzle section done. Finally. So we're going to jump up on the TV. Go to the right out of the window. We've got a little chase sequence coming up. Again, it's really not that difficult at all. But you've got the brainless drones there with buttholes on their faces. Saggy ball skins. Faces. <laughs> Saggy ball skin face. That's a new one. Turn the TV on in the shop window. And then you need to head, sort of, head behind this wall here, turn the TV off, and they're going to be all like, Roar, I'm angry. But also, you have to hide here because they won't see you. This is where the chase sequence begins then, so we need to turn the TV on. You can see that a lot of people just in the background behind the fence there, they are going to break it when we get through. So jump straight through, and immediately when we get to the other end of the TV, obviously head right. And they're like, my TV show! McCarran Notion Street, bruh. Head down here, and then we need to be jumping up on the bar. So, quick as you can, do that. Jump down, and obviously it's just right, and then just up a little bit and around. And then we're going down, so coming down towards the screen. I sort of stay on the right, just in case a stale shoe hits us and we die somehow. Keep going, keep going, head to the right now, and then the TV, smash the TV, quick as you can. And that is that little chase scene done. So again, yeah, it is definitely not too bad in the slightest. But you get a checkpoint. Even if you do end up failing, you get a checkpoint basically at the start of the run of the chase scene anyway. So keep on going right for the time being. And what we've got then is like another chase scene. This time with Slenderman 2.0. So... Go up to the TV screen here, try and grab six out. She's like, eh, hey, me, please. And you're all like, yeah, baby, I gotcha. And then the Slenderman 2.0 is like, hey, flub this shit, bruh. I'm coming to get you. So, as soon as this starts happening, move down. There's going to be an axe that's going to fall on the, off the wall onto the floor here. So, quickly grab it as quick as you can and then smash through the door with it. So, A, to obviously hit things. And what Slenderman 2.0 does is actually tra he trans a little bit closer to you. So as soon as you're done with that, drop the axe and then run, jump up and then climb through the hole. So this is another bit that you have to be careful with. So what we can do, there's going to be two holes up above us. The first one we can walk by, which is this one, 
going to be warped by this one, fine. Stop as soon as you get to the second one, though. You can just see him in the distance. There he is. So as soon as you see that second hole, stop by it, because he is looking for you. Nice fedora hat, though. I want one, but my head is the size of a pea. So wait until he goes, and then we can just carry on for a minute. Another proper chase scene will begin again. Okay, almost. I think we've got one more thing to do. So as soon as we drop down, out of this next hole, we've got to be very quick here. So immediately grab the stool, and then pull it all the way to the right. Now, you may think you've got a lot of time here, but you don't. So you've got to immediately grab this stool, jump up as soon as you think you're close enough. Jump up. Bam. Almost messed that one up. And then pull off these planks. You've got to do it again just as quick as you can because, of course, he's going to transport a little bit closer to us. And then we are free to go. Bam. Jump off uh, when we get to the next one here. Whoops. Almost messed that one up there. <laughs> so climb up and now this is the last chase scene of the sort of level so just keep going straight keep going straight uh, this is a nice easy bit we're gonna have to make a jump now so obviously make that jump bam head down start heading down now there he is as well sl sm 2.0 and, and there's going to be a little open door on the right that we can go through so there it is again make a jump and then what we need to do, we need to uh, climb up over these boxes. And there's going to be a ramp that we need to pull a little lever down. So as soon as we go into the next carriage, obviously after making another jump here. Jump, jump. And this is the part then. So jump off this ramp. Make sure to hold the right trigger so you're grabbing the lever. Let go as soon as you've pulled it. And then you should be good to go. Try not to walk into the seat like I just did there. Slide your butt under with the left trigger and then pull the lever and that ends this chase sequence So, very unfortunately for us then, train derailed, we almost died, but we are strong midget. We are strong and small person, but we are injured. So, we're just going to um, g very gingerly walk to the left and then very gingerly climb up these boxes and just keep going up for now. We are coming to the end of the level. we got one more little thing to do with Slenderman 2.0 and then we will be on to the shortest final chapter. But just keep walking up for now. And so, here then is the boss fight, if you want to call it a boss fight. It's more like a mini boss fight. Um, so basically what uh, SM 2.0 is going to do is he's going to sort of attack you and he's going to start edging closer to you, but he'll have his hand out. So if his hand is on sort of your left, you've just got to put the left directional stick to your left as well. If he's doing it to the right, you've got to do it to the right. So basically, if he's doing the Michael Jackson hee-hee lean, either left or right, you just copy exactly as he's doing. And obviously, if he's doing it up as well, you do it up. Now, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Oh, oh bro, the hat is off. Now, this shit mean business, yo. This shit is business. Goddamn, mono angry. But I will show you exactly what I mean now. So as it begins, he's obviously pointing straight. So you got to hold up straight. And that is sort of like that. That kills him. Oh, hurts him. And as you're going to see now, he's going to start doing the Michael Jackson hee-hee lean to... Well, 
your right. So immediately now you can see him leaning to the right. So now you've got to put the left directional stick to the right. Now he's doing it to the left. You're on your left. You know what I mean. And now he's doing it up. So obviously just make sure to copy exactly what he does before he gets you um, to finish this fairly short boss fight. He could just stamp on you to make things a lot easier, but obviously he didn't think of that, did he? Loser! Imagine being beaten by a little, tiny, small, insignificant child. And you were like 110 foot tall. Well, that's that bit done. But now we are coming up to the final chapter. It should only take us roughly around 20 minutes or so. Maybe just a little bit less. Um, but it's not, not too difficult. Again. So this may have been a little bit confusing. Uh, we've got to basically do a puzzle before we enter the final boss fight. So head toward the door and then what you're going to see is... Oh, no, no, no. We're not allowed to go through that door. And we're like, yeah, flub you then. So head to the right because it's the right door here that is going to open. And now for the majority of this level, what we're going to be doing is heading up and down stairs like these. And there's going to be doors exactly the same as these but with music playing. So it's very vital that you put your headphones on or you turn up the mu uh, turn up your volume because as you'll be able to hear at this door the music is the loudest. So this is the door that we have to go through. Because if you head back to the other door and the music is not playing, then obviously that's not the door you've got to go through. So once again, you stand by this door, no music. So head to the next door, you can hear the music playing. As long as that music is playing the loudest, like I said, that is the door that you've got to go through. Now we've gone through that door. This is the door you can hear the music playing. So, go through that again. This bottom door, nada, nada, no music. The door on the left top has the music. So, hopefully that was explained as fairly well as I could. Um, but that it is quite obvious. But obviously you've got to make sure to turn your volume up so you know exactly wh which door to go through. So it's... This one here, just to the uh, left of the already closed door. And like I said, we'll be doing this for the sort of next five to six minutes or so. So we're going to be clambering up these stairs. Oh man, it wasn't written on my contract to walk, be walking upstairs. And so obviously it gets a little bit more co uh, complicated. So for the first one, what we need to be doing then, just very slowly open this door first. Don't go all the way through. Just open it and then head back on yourself. There we go. So the first one is going to be the top left. I'm pretty sure it's not random every time. So I'll just tell you all the answers anyway. And then it is the uh, top right. Let's go through the top right one now. And then it is the bottom right this time. There it is, you can hear the loud music, so that's where we go in. And that is that little part done. Somebody's really trying to egg us on with 
Ah, nice music, but annoying puzzleness is. So, first thing first, immediately head up to where the plank is, and we're going to have to push this one down. So, if you end up accidentally going through one of the doors, you can just restart the checkpoint, and it starts you from the beginning of this anyway. So, head to the very, very bottom right first. This is where the first door is. And then the second one, we're going to have to go across the plank, which is obviously why we need to push, push the plank down. And then it's just to the left of where we got off the plank there. Again, you can hear the music. Next one, if you head down just a tiny bit, not going across the plank, on the left. The sort of second door on the left down if you want. That is that. So clamber up the stairs again. God damn, honey, you've got some agility, boy. I can't even climb the stairs without being knackered and breathless. So... We have now actually done with that puzzle, so uh, sorry, it wasn't as long as I thought. When we go to the left, this door's going to open, and then, oh my god, oh my god. That's the music box we need to destroy, but, holy crap, we got noodly arms, six. Six has turned into it, the clown, and, well... She is not letting this music box go without a fight. But what we can do is still call her. So obviously press Y. So call her over a couple of times until she's sort of in the middle of the room. Six the clown. And then what we could do, grab the hammer, which she was blocking before. And then we can try to attack the music box. But another chase scene is going to happen. So as soon as we do this, try not to miss, obviously. <laughs> Now we are going to have to start making a break for it. So immediately run out of the room then. Keep going right. She is not happy with us. And then go down. And we're going to head back through the door. It's a pretty linear path, but, you know, just in case. And then jump over this gap here. And then keep just sprinting to the right. We need to... Jump off this ramp through the crawl space. She's going to literally kill us there. And immediately hide under the table underneath. Uh, just, just by this settee here. And what she comically does is checks everywhere except the table. So that came in handy for us. So once her temper, ten temper tantrum ends, even, <laughs> we can now climb onto the table and we're basically going to be heading through the door. Now this, we are coming up to the sort of main uh, part of the boss fight now. And all it is, is just kind of tricking her on a place of where to go so we can hit the <whistles> music box. That's the one. So we need to grab this axe, obviously. You need to jump up and hold on with the right trigger, of course, as you've been used to. Whack yourself through the door, and this is where we are going to do this, Dan. So, she's obviously very protective of her music box. So, you'll get used to these mechanics very quickly. You need to pick up and hold, obviously, the right trigger. Call her, and then she'll go and smash over there. And then we just need to immediately go over, hit the A button, smash the music box. So, that is literally it. Obviously, it gets a little bit more progressively difficult the next two times we've got to do this. But it's uh, not too bad when you sort of know where to figure out sort of how to do her in. N not do her. You don't want to be doing a clown, it the clown type style thing like that. So once again, when you wake up, we're going to grab the door, uh, the axe on the right and smash our way through the door. Nobody wants to be doing an 18 foot monster with noodly arms and crooked toes in there. Nah, not for me. So... Again, we're gonna call. We're gonna go to the other side first. Call her when we're on the right side, and then go up. And then we're just gonna stay here. She won't attack you, but call her again when you're on that left side. Go through the right side, and then you can hit her music box again. Sorry if that was a bit quick, then guys. <laughs> that was um, yeah. So call her on the right side at the bottom, and then call her on the left side when you're at the top. Go through the pole. Job done. So, again, we need to be grabbing the axe. For some reason, it is directly in front of us from where we go up, uh, stand up. But for some reason, I decided to go with the right first when th there's, there's nothing there. It's literally, as soon as you stand up, it's basically right in front of you. I um, guess I just wanted a tour of this whole darkness. It's not very good, to be honest. 
I wouldn't pay to come here again. Screw that. So, final time then for doing this part. She's obviously going to be very quick now. So, like I said, you've got to be right on the money. So, smash your way through. And our axe is actually going to be on the right-hand side now. Somehow we've lost our axe. So, call her when you're on the left. Quickly jump up as quick as you can. Grab the axe and jump back down. Now, you don't actually need to call her there. So, obviously, as, it, as you can see, you need to call her when you're on the bottom left-hand side. And the entrance is on the right-hand side upper portal there. So, call her when you're here. Jump straight through and immediately run up to the next side of the portal. Call her when you're on this right side. And then she will go to the right side. And you've got to be, again, quick. That noodle alarm comes through. But that is the third and final... Um, part of that done so again it's not too bad i think i only died sort of twice that's not too bad at all but for this next bit then all we're doing is as soon as we gain control of mono grab your axo beanie again he has the strength of thor to pull that out of the bloody ground and then give her a call again pressing the white button and then smash the axe uh, smash the music box and we're not quite done yet. Still got a little bit left to do. Tiny bit left now. And that tiny little bit insists consists of another chase scene. So six is like, oh my god, you saved me, bruh. And then all this ugly stuff is going to start trying to chase us down with eyeballs and that so immediately run down and to the right again it's not too difficult all along head through the hole <laughs> and there's going to be a jump up here the gap here could have done that a little bit better but it wasn't perfect but you still got time jump up now you're going to be needing to jump over the gap here past this eyeball and go downwards and then jump across the gap You'll have to be patient here. you just got to wait for it to sort of go the other side. There we go. Jump up the ramp. And again, we're going to climb up. Exactly, obviously, where six is. Jump across the gap again. Oh, just about made that. And then we are sound as a pound. Boy, we have made it, man. We made the end of the game. Keep going. Keep going. And obviously, because games like to fudge us over. Oh, just as soon as we're going to... Go into the safe space. Oh, a bridge escapes. <gasps> but luckily, Six is there to save the day. So thanks, Six. You can grab us up now, hon. Grab us up now. Come on, take your time. I'm slipping, damn it. <laughs> oh, no, she didn't. Hmm. So, there's a twist. Six turned out to be an evil little bitch after all. The darkness and evil consumed her after all, so we've went through all that just to be, uh, just to be the king of the swingers. Well, the dead swingers, anyway. Right then, so this is literally the final playable bit of the game. As Mono, we've just got to go across these... Uh, I mean, I don't know. It kind of looks like what gonorrhea or something would look like if it's been unchecked and uncleaned for a couple of weeks. <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry to put that in your head there. All we're doing then is just heading up to the throne at the top. He is now throne and king of the dead.
Well then, would you look at that? That's Slenderman 3.0. That's always something to look forward to. Now, if you had uh, collected all of the glitching remains, you will now get the secret ending. It's only about 20 to 30 seconds or so. Um, but if you didn't get all glitching remains, you won't get the secret ending, which means you won't get that particular achievement. So that's why it was also very important to grab all of the glitching remains. Again, if you haven't, you can go through chapter select and you'll just have to grab them again, that's all. Um, but yeah, and you'll also get the hat achievement as well for collecting all of the hats. So when we get to it... I mean, obviously, you know when you don't have the secret ending, by the way. It, otherwise, it'll just roll straight to the credits. And it's basically six coming out of the TV. We're going to have a little look. Noi. 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 Okay, here it is. So... If you didn't get the secret ending, it would right now be on the credits, but this is the secret ending. So hopefully, like I said, you got all glitch and remains. Everything went well. Yeah, so just enjoy this little secret ending bit. And Six's Hunger is back, which of course was a prominent feature for those that played the first Little Nightmares. Uh, I know how she feels. Uh, but we're still not done. We've still got two achievements left to get. And literally all it is, is loading up one of the chapters and putting on one of the hats. Or the final hat that we just unlocked. So what we're going to do is actually quit out of the game now. The credits are obviously going to take a couple of minutes Fantastic job by everyone involved in the game, by the way. It was absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely fantastic game, this one. Um, but yeah, so we'll quit out, go back into the main menu. And what we're going to do is actually start up chapter 2. Every other chapter has got some kind of cutscene or something on it. So this is literally just for you know, getting it out of the way as quick as you can. Literally the last two we've got. So press A to start. Obviously, you should know that by now. Go to chapter select, and obviously, as you can see there, it tells you how many hats and glitching remains you've got, you've collected. Head to chapter two, which of course is the school, and then as soon as this one begins, there's no cutscene, so we can just pop the hat on. You should now get the uh, achievement for collecting all hats, and you. Oh, how do I look? And you should also now get the achievement called a uh, prominent daytime consumer or something like that. A prime time content consumer, yeah, close enough. But now that should be it, then, guys and girls. So you should now have 35 out of 35, or 36 if you're on the PlayStation, 1000 Gs, and Platinum Trophy. Happy days. So, honestly, thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the game. Hope you enjoyed the guide as well, and we had a good few laughs, as we always tend to do. Uh, don't forget, of course, to check me out on my socials twitter instagram and patreon as well obviously if you did find this guide helpful don't forget to like comment subscribe and share with a friend as well everything always helps every little helps as they say <laughs> but anyway thanks so so much for watching guys and gals big shout out to all my patreon supporters especially tim g 84 but i'll see you in the next one big love